Hello and welcome. And we are in round seven of the women's candidates, the halfway point. Today could be a very critical round. I'm International Master Ivanka Hauske, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by the man with the best chess catchphrases on the planet, James Canty III. James, welcome to the show. And have you been following the game? Yovi, what's up? What's going on? Hello, chat. How are you guys? I've been following everything, Yovi. Everything. We're in the halfway point now. Games have been exciting. I'm excited because Tan, too, as well. Her game's been well. She played a Joe Baba London. You know, I'm excited about that. So I'm excited to be here and see what happens on round seven today, Yovi. Yeah, I can't wait either. And you mentioned Tan. Tan Zhong Yi, she is the tournament leader. She is there with four and a half points out of six after yesterday's victory. Alexandra Goreshkina, she also won her game yesterday and she is there neck to neck, four points out of six. And in third place, we have Katerina Lagno, who did defeat Veshali with the black pieces. So everything's still very much to play for. Do you think there's going to be movement and understandings today? It is the day before the free day. Mm, it depends on where you are in the standings. Like, uh, you know, it depends on where I am. But I think it's going to be hard to put money on anything, actually, especially with uh, where um, Anna is at the bottom there and Humpy as well. Do they? How are they feeling spirit-wise? I think they're maxed up today, too, as well. Like, what do they want to do there? At the top, too, as well. Like, hey, do I want to keep the lead? How do I keep the lead? How do I play today? Do I have my nerves in check? So it's hard to put really money on anything. And maybe that middle it might be somebody wins, they catapult somebody else. So it's kind of hard to tell. That's why we watch, though, Yovi. We got all day to watch it and see what happens. We certainly do, because today we are going to be in for a treat. Katarina Lagno will play Nurgil Salimova, and this is the match we've been waiting for. Alexander Goryeshkina with the white pieces against Tan Zhong Yi. Anna Muzichuk takes on Hampi Koneri. And Lei Tingje, one of the most active players, is playing Vei Shali, a very similar style. So which one of those games are you most looking forward to? I guess it has to be the big one, right? Yeah, it's got to be that one because they're, I mean, they're like right there. If, if uh, Goryushkina wins, right, she, she uh, catapults right into the first there. And then Tan wins, she extends the lead, which would be nice, right? And then this draw there, okay, peaceful draw type thing happens. But I don't think it's going to be anything. It's going to be anything but peaceful, I think, in today's round. Maybe towards the bottom, they might play a little softer or like more solid, you know, just to be able to not uh, have any damage. Sometimes you want to limit the damage depending on what's going on. I had don't think there's been any easy games whatsoever, <laughs> Canty, in this one. <laughs> but, you know, going into the event, Tan Zhong Yi, she was the fifth rated seed. And take a, take a look at this, because this is really curious. So there you see Tan Zhong Yi. She is in red. She started relatively low. And she's now climbing so that she is one of the favorites to win. And in orange, we do see Garyashkina. She was a top rated, so that's why she's close but take a look at this the yellow line that is the rest of the field look how their chances have just plummeted that is pretty gross in fact it's just like the somebody drew this up and then immediately look at that yellow line it's just plummeting to the bottom but this is why we like to prove numbers wrong because it's like no one else has a chance but tan and obviously uh Goryichkina. but of course we're in round seven there's seven more rounds to go so this is all bogus to me those numbers so far Yes, and uh, well, we will see whether the numbers play out. But do remember that you at home, you can win prizes by voting on who will win before every round by going to each game on the FIDE candidates and FIDE women's candidates events pages. Find the social tab and pick your winner. Go.chess.com slash candidates votes. You only got a couple of minutes before the games start. Remember, you can vote today and you can win big. Wow, I cannot wait for today. And there we do see Katarina Lagno. She had a great win against Beishali yesterday and she faces off Salimova. But this is the encounter that we've been waiting for. Alexander Grashkina against Tan Zhongyi. We got the handshake. Handshake. Grashkina, white pieces. What is she going to open right. with? Is she going to surprise us with E4? Is it going to be H4. E4, knight to F3? No, H4. Oh, okay, maybe another day then. All right, we'll see it one day. But D4 then. We go with the regular D4. Okay. 
D4. And uh, okay, I was curious as to how Tan would handle this, and she goes for D5. Perhaps something solid. Perhaps, you know, because Tan is playing with the black pieces, she just wants to get a solid position that she can uh, just simply neutralize Garyashkina. And there we see C4 on the board. So Garyashkina playing her usual E6. Oh, come on. We've got to be four all day now. Knight like... C3. Oh, Yovi, we wanted some action. I thought they were just going to go at each other oh. today. <laughs> no, this no, no, they are. They time. are. Because this is Garachkina's chance, right? Right, right. This is the chance for her to take the lead. If she wins, knight, oh, okay, knight to f3. But still remember, knight to f3, the Catalan is still very, very tricky. Very, very alive, in fact, with a g3 coming next. Let's see how she responds. She can go, there's many choices. c5, which is more ambitious. Knight of six, very natural, right? You can go c6, which is a little triangle slab that way, too. So, you know, d takes c4. a6, okay. Oh, it a is going to be some fighting, Yovi. It is. Oh, a6. I knew it. I... <laughs> I'm already I, I tell you, there has been, there have been no quick draws. It's Even like the very short kind of, like evenly matched draws they have been full of excitement a6 mm. a6 from tan zhang yi and now what is grash can i gonna play is she gonna take on d5 that's the route that i've always gone for capturing on d5 and determining the pawn structure and arguing that a6 isn't the most useful move in the position but Garechkina does have possibilities to fight it out with queen to b3. She can also still play moves like g3. Maybe we'll see something else. But this is the first surprise mind games in action. I, I, I've said this time and time again, but the opening is probably one of my favorite parts in these types of events because you know there have been training camps. Alexandra, she's had a training camp before the event. She has, I don't know how many grandmasters helping her. That's a mystery, but we do know Tan is working with Jeffrey Jean, very strong American grandmaster. Jeff, Jeff? I didn't even know she's working with Chef Jeff. That's why yes. she's going off right now. It makes sense now. She's also incredibly uh -huh. strong, but wow. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to know who the others are working with, I will tell you. You know? Oh, well, yeah. yes. We would like to know everything, in fact, the OVS. Yeah, we okay, I'll tell you. So. Everything. Okay, so uh, Leiting J, she's working with Timur Rajabov. Oh, and... okay, that's nice. Oh, that King's Indian game. Oh, man, I'm getting all the... Yeah, exactly, so it's beginning to Indian. make sense, right? Yeah, it's making sense, um, right? Timur, King's Indian specialist, okay? And Vaishali Vish is working with Chanda Sandapan, an Indian grandmaster. Oh, San yeah, yeah. Ramesh. Okay. Yeah, and Humpy Canary, she hasn't uh, revealed her second, so we don't uh -huh. know. Salimova is uh, working with two very strong Bulgarian grandmasters. It's actually, no, sorry, Cheparinov, Bulgaria, wow. and then Gokachan as, a, I think, a Turkish grandmaster. Okay. And who else is there? There's plenty of players. Ah, this is really, this is really exciting. Katerina Lagno. Grisha. She's playing superbly well. She is being supported by Yesipenko. Oh, Yesipenko, the young beast. Okay, yeah. that's nice. He plays E5 very well. Too. I mean, he plays everything well, but yes. Okay, totally. nice. Very nice. Very nice. And we have Anna. Pardon. Did you say Anna? Anna? No, we don't know. I don't know Anna's Anna's. Yeah, Anna's she hasn't okay. announced it. Yeah. Okay. I understand. So. I understand. And. I and uh, yeah, so yeah, interesting, interesting times. But okay, we do have a pause from Alexandra here after a6. We're anticipating maybe she's going to take on d5. That's a possibility. Maybe she's going to be playing moves like bishop coming out to g5. Whoops, hey, bishop g5 versus it I it. Whoa, I pulled out yoki. the opening book and uh, there you go, bishop g5. And now I'm expecting bishop e7, just Play. trading off the dark square bishops, and indeed it has been played. So White is going to be arguing that you just play this just like a normal queen's gambit declined, except mm -hmm. those bishops are off the board, and White is going to be very quick to utilize this pressure down the sea line, whereas Black is going to say exchanges helps her, and it's going to be okay. So I'm expecting knight to d2. 
just to overprotect this pawn on c4. And remember, white is going to be primed to be using the c line. So what do we think about this? Great opening preparation from Tan. Yeah, I think it's a it's very flexible. The a6 move is very flexible. It's the Janowski variation of the Queen's Gambit decline. Kind of actually the most aggressive you can get is the right there. And they're like, you know, chat looking at it is like, how is that in a6? Wow, you know, with yifty doo da, that's very aggressive, right? But it's actually not. It doesn't look like it's aggressive at all. I mean, the prop the what Black wants to do is actually go b5 and c5. It's very very fast. That's all we're trying to do yeah. here as as quickly as humanly possible. We're trying to get the queen side active and mobile. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, and at some point, I mean, black can be very flexible and hit our b5 when we want to. If you got knight of six, you develop. Black usually just has really good games here with these positions I've seen. So, I mean, I, th I think it's okay. It was a great opening choice to uh, being solid, you know, but also trying to keep some, some, uh, some hope and chances to have something more than just having a very, very boring classical game from Tan. Yeah. And uh, I'm expecting g3 from Garrett Kana. So... Well, it, what is slight advantage to Tan Zhong Yi just in the kind of mind games, in the opening mm -hmm. preparation, 100%. but definitely, definitely everything to play for. And uh, we'll see how this game develops. But let's go back to the bird's eye view and have a peek at the other games. And Kanti, I'm going to let you decide where you want to head to. Well, they all look exactly the same, except board number four, in fact. Uh, but the other two are like, oh, that's the same opening. It's literally the same opening. Wait, is that a Cozio in both games? Are you kidding me? They have to be working together. How do you play a Cozio in both games? Or maybe okay. that's like a Scotch. Yeah, no, that's like a Scotch. I don't know what's going on, but it looks like a Cozio in both games here. Yeah, it right. does look like a cozier on both games. And uh, the games that you're referring to, um, Lagno against Salimova and uh, Muzichuk against Humpy. Okay. No, it's just interesting. So where, do you, where, do you, where do you want to head to? Let's go over to Salimova. I know she's a very aggressive player, I can see, from tactically just uh, analyzing the games and choices she made. I think she has uh, she likes to fight a lot, also being an international master in the field, but very strong, much stronger. So... Definitely, let's go over there to that game. Katarina Lagno is an okay. experienced GM as well. Got to take that game. What's up, chat? I see you guys there. And need a drink. Hello. What's going on? Ben and Karen in chat as well. And I see, hey, BJH. What's up, chat? Good to have you guys as well. Yeah. Big hello from me as well. But uh, let's go from the beginning because, as you mentioned, Akozio. So E4, E5, we do see Salimova go back to E4, E5. But now mm -hmm. after Knight to F3, Knight C6, we did see her play the Petrov defense. But after she lost to Vaishali, perhaps she decided to switch over to a lesser known Lopez. Because after Bishop to B5, mm -hmm. Knight to E7. Right. The Cozio, as you highlighted. And here, White has many moves. You can go castles, you can go C3, you can even go Knight to C3. So right. what was chosen from Lagno, castles, and now knight to g6. Knight to g6, c3, sorry, not c3, which is the main move, but d4. Mm -hmm. And uh, now after e takes d4, this is all normal. Knight takes d4, bishop to c5. Bishop to e3 is uh, hasn't yet been played. So it's now Lagno, Lagno's turn. Bishop e3, maybe knight to b3. It kind of feels like a scotch, doesn't it? But with this Definitely. knight being there on g6. Well, that's exactly right. Wow, just a strange scotch with the knight on g6 there. So, yeah, knight well, of five she's... jumps out. I mean, there's all kind of things. But I think I remember looking at this from the black side. Knight of five is going to run into some d5 ideas later. So knight of five, I think you just castle, and then there's some d5 later. Knight b3, I don't even five. know that. Yeah, maybe your castle, and then d5 is, is coming. At some point yeah the white has to figure out what are we like, going to do right now you got to get pieces off the back rank so and the knight totally. to and uh let's have a look at uh knight to b3 but there's also bishop to e3 so bishop e3 I like, that. I like that yeah so one of the reasons i like that is because after knight you're threatening something after knight takes c6 and this bishop on c5 is loose so the big question is do you capture on d4 or do you step back? And uh, my opening database ha is answering it for me and saying, actually, you take on d4. With the bishop, though, right? Or no? Yeah, I with the bishop. I forgot to sign. Does it make a difference? 
It does. I just don't remember why EOV. And then because I, I remember looking at this from the black side, and I was like, something with Bishop D4, and I don't know if there's a Queen G5 or something. You're right. Queen According G5, to the database, here. there's a Queen G5. Oh, and yeah. Nakamura lost a game. Can you see that in the database or no? With no, not, not, not in this one. Nakamura lost in like a move. He played something here that is answered immediately with like, I can't remember. If there's a move, Knight H4 like wins somehow. What's the, what's uh -huh. the so if you go point? Knight C if you go Knight C3, this is losing because Knight takes D4. And, and Knight of, and Knight H4, yeah, that's it. Oh my goodness. This is so and Knight cool H4. To see this live. Because oh. yeah, Knight of three and Queen G2, yeah, exactly. Right. I just seen this little weird thing this. once ever before. Oh my goodness. That is that'd be nasty if that actually happens. So you go G3 to stop Queen takes G3, Knight yeah. takes F3. Knight no, F3, this is a crappy right? card fill for it in a, in some theory. That's, that's exactly right, Anita. That's exactly right. It's from Chessable crap. Yeah, I have. I just, I'm, I'm insane with the books. I'm not even going to lie. But no, that definitely came from a Chessable book. I do remember seeing that. I mentioned okay, that. this is a vicious trap, though, because it vicious. looks so normal to go knight c3. And yeah, this Okay, so what's knight b3? Like, what's that? What happens on knight b3 then? Because that's a. a okay, so, so yeah, here, bishop takes c6 is the main move. But let's look at knight to b3 which is ironically enough probably the safer one right right knight to b3 bishop moves bishop comes back to b6 and, and now knight c3 something what next castles right maybe king h1 i like to go at four or five quickly or something like that yeah king king h1 the main move actually is knight to d5 but king h1 oh. has been played before and mm -hmm. one game with a hundred percent record <laughs> So yeah. someone was channeling that in a county. Well, we have a move. <laughs> oh, we got a move. We got. We do. Let's uh, go back and uh, see Bishop E three played. Oh man! If we go down this line, if we go down, no, 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 no. Yobi, be... it's. If we go down this line, Yobi, be... we there is no coming back. Oh, no. My... Okay, so bishop to e3, and this is where it gets really relevant, right? So the main move is bishop takes d4, bishop takes bishop, and then the queen swings over to g5. I think, oh, was it? Oh, it is, yeah. It's just no castling, yeah. It's just queen g5. And, and knight c3 would actually just lose the game on, on the spot. The spot. On this the... is like a kind of trick that you'd see in scholastic <laughs> chess, right? <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. I, I, I was helping out with some tournament and the kids were just showing me all these cheapos and they were like you know, playing Look all this, this dodgy trick. moves in order to get these things. Knight, queen takes knight and the knight comes to h4. h4. Queen takes g2, checkmate, or the knight coming to f3, Correct. which would just net the queen. So, okay, knight c3, the most logical move on the board you cannot play. So the main line, because this queen, queen is attacked, knight, yeah, you have to go bishop takes knight okay. and now Take. i was expecting everyone to play d takes e yeah d takes c6 maybe knight b four, takes no. six has been played wow. yeah wow. so after b c6 f4 oh we're in for a sharp time whoa sheesh what is what that? is this how does that even i don't work? know <laughs> i don't know knight takes f4 right queen, queen f3? f3 oh my goodness That's knight to e6 whoa queen whoa whoa Queen d8. takes f7, king to d8, and it's at this point you realize that the king is safe as houses there on d8. Rook to f8 is coming. I'm about to start playing this with like, I'm about to start playing this today. I was just looking at some lines, but like, wow, this is insane. This is loose. What a crazy, crazy line. So, okay. That's crazy. Loads and loads of danger. So, okay, maybe not an f4. Maybe you need to kind of take some time and, and yeah exactly e3. yeah bishop e3 what happens on bishop e3 yeah that, that's logical bishop e3 safer no problems yeah. maybe queen f6 hits the pawn c3 Oops, and hang on there yeah so I, i've gone back to this position but the fact that salimova is hesitating oh she may not maybe yeah. she doesn't know she maybe she file. Know. oh no she don't know the file right. yeah it but okay, if what happens after knight takes? I've actually um, never seen knight. We takes trade, knight. trade, <laughs> trade everything. And then maybe castles. Um, yeah, but maybe after castles you go f four. I love yeah, the f four move. Love it. Looks great for white. She walks walks yeah. around. Look at that. 
Katarina with the walk away to get up from the board there. Psych, always a psych win. I mean, sometimes you're just literally going to the bathroom or getting some water, but also it's more like, especially when you get up and walk around and you know it's a good position and you, you definitely hit them psych, psych wise. So, yeah. yeah. From Lagno. Okay. Well, well, well. A very interesting game going on here. So, tricks galore. If uh, Salimova goes for the main line, Bishop takes Knight, or she could also opt for Knight takes Knight. But okay, let's maybe go back to the bird's eye view and take cool. a look at uh, the other games. Yeah, let's go to the other cozy old games since it's a cozy old day. It's a cozy day. Yeah, in the day. and that was that was yeah. in the game between uh, Muzichuk and uh, Humpy Kaneru. And let's right. have a look at how this one went. So e4 e5, knight three, knight c6, bishop b5. It seems like, yeah. Sorry, I was racing through the moves in my excitement to see what happened here. So knight to e7. It's, it's slightly different though because delayed. Humpy flicked in a a6, so it's delayed. Yeah. Cozio, or does it have another name? I don't even know. I actually never seen that delayed person portion of it. <laughs> we just gonna call it delayed Cozio. Does it? Uh, is there an opening tree for it, or does the chess com label? Yeah, it is quite funny because uh, on on my on this opening tree, it calls everything the Morphe defense. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> the, Morphe. Morphe is, it is Morphe defense and then Cozio defense. All right, it's just uh, one of those things. So knight to e7, okay, then I go and put up the opening. And here we see Anna go c3, knight to g6, d4, and now pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, bishop b4, I guess you have to accelerate the play. So knight goes to c, oops, that didn't happen actually. Instead, uh, bishop to d2, not knight c3, bishop takes d2. And now it's decision time. Do you take with the queen so that you can get the c3 square for mm, your knight? Or do you that. take? Yeah, I think I was instinctively taking with knight bd2. Uh, because I'm just okay. like, oh, not, you know, development overall. Like I always tell students this too, um, even though, you know, it, it, what you teach students, a lot of times you even repeat yourself, right? So having the fact of just good things happen when you develop. So. I immediately was like, oh, yeah, just get that off the back rank. But queen d2 does develop. And I think that actually turns out to be the better move, it feels like. Queen d2 and then knight c3 and then knight's on a natural development square. Yeah, well, if you're able to get knight c3 and then no d5, which right. is the move which I feel that black wants Maybe to be now. doing. Maybe even played now, in fact. Yeah. Problem. Take, take but if, you, if you do it now, then... You take knight c3 after that. Sorry, I'm, I'm just uh, Queen takes. going back. D5. Yeah, then D5. And what's going to happen next? I would probably take it and then go Knight C3. There's Queen E6 check, which I was calculating King D1, believe it or not. <laughs> King. <laughs> King D1. Yeah, well, King F1. Okay, King F, because I can do it the other way too as well. King F1. It, yeah, the evaluation bar, you know, <laughs> is cool about that. it. It's like, no. What? And look at that. You have Rook E1 and D5 as threats. So it's just so, like, how do you even get out of that? It's so crazy how the engine just laughs at you with the nasty. Well, threat. I guess it's because maybe you can just cast. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. But castles D5, right? Yeah, I was looking at Queen to G4. Queen G4. Right? Yeah. Can, can you get away with it? One. Yeah, D five, right. yeah. G four, like insane. this monarch here is what not long that? for the world. Wait, what the, so go a king f one, okay? Go the other yeah, way. Yeah, king f, king f one. That not might king. be the that's the better way. A king to f one, and, and this. Let's one's see how the eval bar, an eval bar. Okay, it's there fine. Is a, there is queen c four check though. That's a stupid check. That is stupid. Okay, king g one. What? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try this one, right, and uh, King to G1, and now I'm going to get out of there as yeah. quickly as possible, as and I don't know what's happening here. Me uh, in this modern day it. chess, you know, I wouldn't put it past that yeah. white is probably more than okay, because you've got moves like H4, H4 H5, right, right. lift up the rook on the board, you know, move, harass this queen on C4. It should be three, come on. Yeah. It's well, theory. We're really yeah, but we really got into the weeds here because it's not actually 
kind of guaranteed that after bishop yeah. takes d2, this is the decision time for Anna here. Is she going to take with a queen? Is she going to take with a knight? And yeah, what do you what do you predict? I think she's going to take with the queen because she's still calculating. Like knight bd2 is going to be so many things you can do after that. Like, okay, castle is very safe. Queen d2, I think, is going to be some fireworks because if you don't go d5, then I get d5 in, which is really exactly. strong. And my knight gets to c3. So, yeah, d this is very critical, I think, actually. Queen takes d2. Yeah. And then what what's the best move from engine standpoint like after queen d2 okay so after queen d2 we we'll kind of hit the nail on the head minus the creative king moves so d5, <laughs> d5 is, okay. is the correct move pawn takes pawn queen takes okay. and so knight now I, I just switched it on knight c3 and then queen e6 king and f1. then it says yeah it says king f1 but then queen, c, queen, queen c4 and King G1. It prefers it prefers quieter moves like Bishop Queen to oh, E3. We don't do that over here, Jovi. This is not that type of channel. Okay. We don't do that over here. We go King F1 and then think about everything else. Yeah. Well, it's also it kind of it also quite like going just castles and oh, castles. Yeah. Simple. Simple. normal game. But yeah. okay, we have a decision in the meantime, and yeah, knight B takes d2 now, i was going to ask you about uh, this particular game because humpy she's having a tough time of it she's yeah. lost two games Agreed. yesterday she had quite a devastating loss against Leighton j with the white pieces yeah. anna muzichuk had a tough game against right. uh tanjong yi do you think that they'll want to kind of like halve it out have a, a solid ending before the free day and then like build up the momentum save up the energy because as everyone knows it's not how you start it's how you finish how you finish yeah no i think for them especially uh, being here uh just being at the bottom of the leaderboard here having a rough tournament two points both of them so having that you know i my mindset is more like well i'm the better two points than you are so i want to beat you so it depends especially if i have white here um and uh, anna having white pieces having a big center i'm actually gonna take some chances here you already aren't having a great tournament i'm not either but this may be my chance to actually turn things around, especially going into the uh, being this this the halfway point now, basically after this game here and going into the rest day. So I want to end smoothly here, very very smooth yeah. white pieces. Stay, and take my chances, as they say in the professional field, win with white, draw with black. And of course, you want to do both, win with white and black. But it's uh, um, for her having white pieces, you want to take that advantage because I'm gonna have black next. True, true. But I actually suspect that they might go for. A relatively calm draw it definitely can it it's can a long have event uh, it's so a it's long alive. event right. so we'll, we'll see we'll see which hey, one of friend. us is right <laughs> uh <laughs> let's uh have some fun okay so let's go to the bird's eye view talking about fun and uh let's take a look at the the game that we haven't seen and that is between leiting jay and fei shali Leighton J, she has made her way back up to 50% with her victory over Humpy Canary, whereas Vaishali had a tough loss yesterday against Katarina Lagno. It all went wrong for her, Vaishali, but she has that style where she goes all in. And, mm -hmm. well, you've won the cap for Vaishali because that is her philosophy. Calculation over, over everything. everything. Of course, 100%. If Vaishali's a fan, I'm a big fan of Vaishali's play. And uh, her strong, uh, how's her stronger mindset, right? right. Uh, also being, you know, Prax sister and being GM, like having that type of uh, them two together training. That's just awesome to be around that, you know, and see the aura that she brings. She's just a great person in life. You always want to know more about Fishali. She doesn't really talk about much yeah. uh, herself, right? So very strong. I know it, up from the black side too, she plays some Grunfelds. I was actually a fan of. I remember her on the way to GM, actually, as she's getting her title soon. Um, she was playing some very nasty Grunfelds, like having some excellent games. I've never seen a Grunfeld, so I know she's contributed to that theory. So good to see her here having a tough time. It does happen. Of course, this is uh, this is the candidates, all the pressure, the nerves there, and et cetera. But here, I think solid games so far. Nothing went wrong. This is basically still theory here. After H6, by many ways, you reach this position um, in the so, Italian game. Can we backtrack a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Just kind of show the beginning because uh, E4, E5, and... Leighton J went for the Italian game, which which is quite funny because it's the opening that Vaishali earlier on used. D3, Bishop C5, and Castle. So 
Leighton Jade not immediately going for these bishop to g5 ideas that uh, Vishali used against Anna Mizuchuk. Well, that wasn't a different. Okay, but any, anyway, yeah. so c3, a5, stopping any queenside expansion, and now knight to d2. And I remember being told another rule in this type of position that when the pawn is an a5 and this bishop, you want to put your bishop on e6, and white says, White should refuse that trade and should put the bishop on b5. I find these positions yeah. very, very difficult. So I was uh, kind of telling my co-commentators earlier on, I always ask them, like, is there any little rules that you've kind of gained from this type of position? Because yeah. they're so tense. There's not that much space. All the minor pieces are on the board. And it's, it just seems like a very long maneuvering game. And I, I got told one little nugget of advice that often white is slightly better because the light squared bishop has more potential. And here I remember in this particular position, I was also told by uh, like Mir Mirchnichenko, who said that uh, Grishuk's rule is that uh, when you have this pawn formation, you want to be going bishop to e6 with black. <laughs> He's just, yeah, correct. It's, and, I think you, <laughs> and to add to both of those, in fact, is correct. A5 is the newer way. Magnus actually used this too as well to clinch his uh, world championship against Jan, uh, his last one. But uh, this A5 move is more topical. It stops all queenside expansion. Literally, white will never be able to expand on the queenside. So this A5 move is is new. It's newer. You can also play bishop A7 uh, and coming uh, quite quickly like that. If knight goes to B5, we bring it back to B6. We are going to follow up with a bishop E6 and a rook E8. This is easy plan for black. I mean, one of the easiest plans ever is just always do it like this. Bishop E6, put the pawn on A5. The bishop will go back to a7. You play pawn h6. Bishop goes to e6, rook goes to e8. And if, if they take on e6, then you actually want to go with queen e8 at some point and even bring the knight around from c6 to g6. So very easy plans to understand. And you just whip out the move so fast because you know what you need to do here. And, of course, that's top-level chess. As many ideas, many, many ideas here. So anything can really happen. I think that what happened after rookie one? Did she just go h6? I think she went bishop She went bishop oh, e6, she followed okay. the Grishuk plan. Right. And then uh, now rook to e1 happened. h6, your idea. And, and just we're just waiting for this bishop to go back to a7. And then the Canty idea, knight e7, knight g6. What will the knight do on g6? Uh, lots of times, Just in fact, it, it goes to f. Oh, it goes to f4, and you have knight h5 with f4 too as well. Uh huh. Okay. Oops, that was a strange array. So then <laughs> nice. Look at your arrow game. That came from chess, her chessable course on chessable guys. <laughs> it, starting out the Carol Khan with Yvanka Auska. So you know, go get that right now. Go You're right. Yeah. I uh, did have to master my. Yeah, you arrows. had to do that. I know. That's how I know. Yeah. I remember. I'm like, oh, I did that. I was nice with the arrows from the chessable course. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as uh, as Canty's pointed out, we're still very much in theory after age six. And I've got the opening database right in front of me. The main move is to go bishop to b5. And it's also possible to go bishop b3. That's been tried before. But bishop b5 and uh, then, wow, I actually recall seeing an idea like this. The main idea after this is to go queen to b8. That's disgusting. Does that ring a bell with you? Actually, yes, Ding Loren. But um, I don't remember what game or who he played, but Ding Loren played this with black. I think I don't remember who won what happened but queen b8 wow with the queen a7 idea that's crazy yeah knight f1 queen a7 set up a battery against f2 and uh, rook to e2 and now a4 oh black is being Ooh. really maximalist about this type of position expanding on the queen side as much as possible feels a little bit risky to leave the queen all the way over here and neglect the queen side but apparently it's been played before Queen a5, hunt down this light squared bishop. After bishop c6, b takes c6. Right, yeah, or... the game kind of still continues with a beautiful kind of imbalance. White is headed for the king side, whereas black has complete control over the queen side. Interesting. Very interesting. Wow. But that's uh, the main line. And bishop b5, would you know it? has mm -hmm. been played on the board and we're going to see whether Vishali goes for this plan of going to queen to b8 or perhaps she's going to be playing for something a little bit different what do you expect 
I actually expect uh, that Queen B8 idea is really cool. In fact, really cool. I'm just always um, used to my usual stuff, but I think Knight E7 runs into some D4 ideas, which is why Queen B8 actually yeah. is better. Knight E7, D4 is super annoying. I, yeah, I think I actually have to take and move the bishop. So I, I allow Another white... alternative is, is to go Knight to D7. So just uh, getting ready to reinforce okay. E5. And go f5 i so. mean how, how how does this work i know you I've can't never, go d4 nah, you, you can't go d4 because too many pieces on it so yeah. after knight to f1 it's there on the board and then black is going to be responding with d5 or as you mentioned f5 but yeah. we're in for a fight if we this are happens. we are we are in for a fight guys this is, all, this is what we like to see you know we like to see no quick draws it happens, yeah. it happens. The ladies, I see, like they always fight now. You barely see it with the ladies with the uh, quick draw. They like quick draw. No, that's not. We don't do that over here. They just play it out. No, no quick draws here. Remember, also the players cannot offer a draw. They will have to repeat the position three times. Three times. And now the players have all emerged from the opening. I think it's the perfect time for us to go on a short break, but don't go anywhere because we are guaranteed fun to come.
We are back. And remember, it is around seven the day before the free day. But that doesn't seem to have put off our players because they've come to the board in a fighting mood. And Canty, we are in for a treat because the games and the openings already are looking quite sharp. So let's take a look at the bird's eye view and see how things have developed. Maybe we should revisit the Garashkina Tanjongi game. That is the one that I've been eagerly anticipating. Definitely. Let's go take that take a look there. As we have a hanging pawn structure in the center of the board. So you push one the other. It's basically two isolated pawns. You push one, the other becomes weaker, but they also can be very aggressive. That's just basic line. They either gonna be very weak or very aggressive in one or the other. So you gotta remember okay. and you have to push them very, very um uh, selectively, you have to be very cautious on when you De push these pawns. Definitely. And I often find that when you play with them, it's often good just to sit with the space that they give you because like with the queen on e6, just for example, this queen will have the flexibility to move over to the queen side, to the king side. Everything is full under control. But I'm kind of curious because we left it really early. We left it on move five. How did things develop? And knight d2 was played, knight to f6, and g3. So Gary Eshkina did try to kind of get a Catalan without the dark square bishops and hoping to make use of this half open c line. And uh, now castles, bishop g2, b6. Aha, uh -huh. and this is the moment. Normally, I have a rule of thumb that when you see b6, you take on d5. But it happens Ooh, anyway, so it doesn't really the next, make... The next chessable course for Yvanka. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Because it, it kind you do it as soon as you see b6, because it means that this bishop is forced to go to b7. It's got no other choice. If it goes on other adventures on the king's side, well, you leave behind weak light squares. So that's why after b6... I would have gone C takes D5, but absolutely fine to go castles, C5, and here is the situation where we see those hanging pawns. Queen C2, Bishop B7, and now here they are on the board. Knight B3, Knight BD7, Knight A5, Rook A B8, taking on B7. Yeah, because I like that imbalance. I've read a lot about, you know, I'm a tactician, tactics first, uh, you know, uh, sack first, think later, right? All type of whatever we can do with tactics. That's just us. But you do have to have a level of position to play that can lead to tactics. Great positions. In fact, um, what is it? Bobby has a quote, um, tactics flow from a superior position. And a lot of times you can have tactics flow from just having good imbalances and understanding. I think practically knight takes bishop looks great. And then you also have the hanging pawns that we deal with for the rest of the game. And we have a bishop versus knight scenario as well. So we have some imbalances here to actually play for more than just, you know, two results. Or uh, sorry, but like we can make it interesting and play for two results and not have ourselves have a, uh, well, all three results we're playing for really, but yeah. not have a boring game. So we can do things with our pieces and activity and create chances with the imbalances we create on the board. So I think that's a good choice to take on B7. Okay. And, and uh, well, this but this is the type of position where we need moves, though, Canty. This is something that I tell my ki my <laughs> kids, great, uh, my students. That is, I don't have any kids, but okay, because <laughs> they always say to me, "I want attack," and I'm like, "Yeah, but your ki your pieces are dumb, right?" right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give them specific instructions. Yeah. Yeah, like, ruthless yeah, jerk. You see, ruthless. Y'all hear that chat? I'm like, yeah, but your pieces are dumb. I'm like, I'm five, but your pieces are stupid. <laughs> says Yavanka. Wow, that's yeah, what you talk about there. Yeah. Because they try to kind of they try to bluff me a lot with going like yeah yeah they just attack yeah yeah do do this and I'm like yeah yeah but you you nice. gotta give some purpose to your pieces and you gotta be specific. So here, yeah. I, I'm kind of worried about C4. I'll be I'll be honest. Yes. C4 is kind of worrying. And mm -hmm. uh, one kind of rule of thumb that I know is that you restrain these two, these two pawns. You try to entice them forward because when you entice them forward then they leave behind weak squares and as you pointed out this bishop on g2 bearing down on d5 so i just wonder whether maybe you go b3 that was definitely going to be doesn't move uh, yeah and keep an eye on the c4 square because there is a lovely pattern right where black could be going c4 and then piling up on the b2 point as much as possible and with the pawn on c4 it restrains that weakness but yeah so b3 and then what what is I was Black thinking doing? the same thing. Maybe put a rook on the C file to try to get the C pawn to push at some point. 
And, and then uh, it's just going to be a while to get this stuff moving here because I don't really have a choice. I mean, the Knights is what uh, Devoreski calls superfluous, right? So they are not the greatest Knights. They actually do the same thing, kind of. They hit kind of the same squares, or they're fighting over, obviously, D7 and F6. So they aren't the greatest, which means when you move the Knights, it is going to make the pawns on D and C be even weaker because you're moving a defender away from both pawns. So my goal is to maybe go rook D1 and C1. But then this is going to be the hard part is once we get the ideal setup for something you'll see like in the Maroxy line of the Sicilian from white side, what happens is sometimes they'll say is you'll get the ideal position. And then it's like, how do you improve? And that's what you're trying to do. And it's hard to do that. It's hard to get that improvement or it doesn't happen. Or you just, your position's so good that you can't improve it, right? I think so yeah. rook C1, rook D1. And then um, and we try to figure out how do we make progress? Let's say black gets all their pieces ideal. How do we make progress is going to be the question. It just certainly is. Like now, in this kind of position with a rook coming to c8, I'm super tempted to go knight to d4. And, you know, I'm trying to provoke a weakness from you to cover f5 and maybe jump in with a knight to e3. But then it's not that easy. Somehow the knight wants to be on f4, doesn't it? That's Ooh, actually yeah, the that's... dream square for the knight. Great. Yeah, I put it on f4, in fact. For. In fact, it looked like she made a move. There were some moves, by the way. Rook D1. Okay, there's some moves. Okay. So a rook, rook B8, knight takes B7. Indeed, you rook called it rook F to D1 and rook yeah. F B8 on the B3? board. Automatic. B3. And some C4, though. C4 is yeah, strange. Yeah, but C4 is really tempting, right? Okay, so yeah. it's giving up material. But then rook c8 or even c7. Rook that was my whole idea. B2, right? Or no. rook c8. I was actually just looking at or rook c7. Ah, okay. Rook c8. Yeah, one of these oh, ideas. Very nice. And then it's very just nice. like, you I'm going to get the pawn. Like, exactly. The pin's in the wing. Like, I don't know. Maybe queen a6? This is, but then queen e2. This is getting spicy. Man, there's some stuff here. Queen, queen, queen a4? Three. Yeah, queen a4. Queen a4. A4, knight c5. Oh, snap. Knight c5, yeah. That's strong. That's really strong. Wow. Eva bar goes up, though. Interesting. Yeah, maybe we got queen a3. I was going queen e2 there. I'm not even going to lie. I was just going to take the pawn on e2. Apparently, that's yeah, this, cool. this is, this is. Oh, that's dangerous. Really... The d pawn. Man, this is wild. But now it's coming back to white once again. Like, after all of this, we tried to shake it up, and white looks great. So, white just has a very good position. And let's going down a few lines practically and it still feels like white's just better even after that little shamble of like whoa what's going on white comes out victorious with a pass deep on i still have the bishop as an imbalance in an open position yeah i think practically white's just much better as a practical standpoint you just have an easier yeah. move i think and, and i don't have the weaknesses of the the um the hanging pawns they could be very strong obviously but a lot of times they can also be weaknesses that you know it's going to take a sometimes engine like play to be able to make the best use of these hanging pawns we have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So hang on a second. So after Rook FB8, B3 indeed played. And now the question is, do you go B3? Maybe you can also, I've also had this type of idea done. I like that. I Indeed. like that a lot. Big fan. A5 to get A4 and then Rook to B2. Beautiful. And keep these two pawns intact. Beautiful. A4, A5, I think is great. Whoa, Cha Cha Chess with a five gifted to the community in chat and also a raid earlier. Shout out to you, man. If you got a sub, say thanks in chat. Thank you, Cha Cha Chess. What's going on, yeah. chat? We see money there. Everyone else, that's nice, man. Shout out to you guys. Fire. Fire. Cool. Oh, that's uh, lovely that you're chatting because I haven't had time. <laughs> I always, I always, yeah. I, I'm in charge of the board. Um, yeah. I'm not that, that talented at doing many things. I'm in charge of the board. I, 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 I'm uh, following the script. So uh, uh, did you see some moves? I was just wondering, A5 played. A5 played? Let's go. Look at that. A5, Yo, yeah. A5. Well, I've had it done to me. You know, they, they go A4 and they just break open the B line in order to, to activate their pieces. The knights, they are superfluous. I completely agree with that. But they this knight on D7 is a great defensive piece. Oh, and what will happen if white just kind of says, I'm not going to let you have control over the B line? I mean, it's somehow... Oh, boy, that's crazy. 
I know it's not very nice. It's not very, it's not kind of very active. Is there something better? Because uh, you're the active one. I'm, I'm the positional yeah. <laughs> this scaredy cat right. here. <laughs> Uh, E3. I was just thinking E3. Sometimes E3. you have to go E3. before you do anything else. Yeah, I was just thinking E3 first. Eva Bar didn't like that either. So maybe just Rook A C1. I mean, that is the most active move, it seems like. Rook A C1. Okay, Rook A C1. But then, then what's going to be the answer to Jesus. this? Okay, so what do we play then? Eva Bar is just like, no, that's not it. That's not it. Like all the human moves. And this is why the engine is the engine. Because like everything is apparently wrong that we're playing. So we just got to figure out. Uh, uh -huh. what is, right. is is there what is there anything like this knight to h4? Oh, that's uh, cool. I just that's had. A, okay, that's it. That's the move. I've seen this type of idea before in my notes. So, <laughs> so let, let's because this kind of reminds me of a, a queen's Indian type position where I remember mm -hmm. playing with my with my friends some training games and night h4 night f5 or something that came up oh yeah that's and, correct that's and important. let's let's be honest the pawn grabber in me is jumping with joy at the prospect of winning the pawn on d5 yes Yavi. yes i will take the pawn if you give me the pawn yeah. thank you yes 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 okay so what is black gonna do like push forward a d4 but then you don't need to worry about uh queen e6 maybe a move but then knight of five g6 knight h6 king g7 and i'm good like i'm just calling your bluff yeah then then, then i'm coming here and d4 um, hold on let's get this fight d4 takes takes you hey bishop's hang i might go d4 okay now the engines just say you lost your mind okay yeah okay we got you got i'm taking it right i'm taking it right. thank Take you very much and then like and then the bishop now I and maybe then, i'm gonna go bishop f3 just uh, to control yeah, the this knight jump control the squares yeah yeah and look the knights being superfluous it's a worse problem because now we can't use them in an attacking position that we would like so d4 which would not work at all because our pawn takes okay. the squares covered oh so okay let me just check because uh a5 played i'm just going to check with the engine okay engine says best okay, move not knight h4 it is second choice Knight to e1 with exactly the same <laughs> idea, putting that knight on d3. <laughs> Mine just. Well, oh, okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. 91. Nice, nice. 91 with the same idea of going bishop takes d5. Yeah. Okay. It's natural. Like once you see it, you know, it was, I was listening to Danya yesterday. It makes sense, right? It makes a lot of sense. Once you see it, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And it's nasty because and, remember we were talking about knight f4 too as well, right? So the knight can go to d3 all the way around to f4. It's just crazy how strong that move is. Knight e1. Yeah, because we were actually talking earlier on how this knight wants to be on f4, of course. And when you kind of frame your thinking in that way, where, does my, where do my pieces want to go? Then, okay, knight e1 just jumps out. You're targeting d5. You're going to get to e3 with some attack against c, c5. And you're also covering the b2 square. Well, that's why the engines are amazing. They play at oh, godlike level. Yeah. But okay, I was curious. C four. If oh C four, we gotta take that. We gonna test you there. We just we we take and first think later. Yovi, what's next? Which one? Go on, hey. Which which one? Bishop takes D five. Oh yeah, you're right. You say which one? I'm actually going B C. In fact, B C. Like yeah, then rigged rig to B two. And then ooh, they don't like I... that at all. Okay, so maybe Queen. Yeah. Uh, C3 and Queen E2 is the idea, huh? Is there a rook B1? Yeah, no, Queen like takes E2. Queen takes Queen... E2, and then I'm heading for F2. Right. And Knight D3. I mean, this is risky, though. This is risky. This is, this is really risky. Rook C2, Queen A5. Highly risky for both sides. DC, Queen A5. Rook... Yeah, but they're into DC is just winning, maybe. No, Bishop F1 first. Wow, this is nice crazy. Point. Look at this line. Like, this is insane, yo. Like, what is this? <laughs> what is yeah, this I, I don't know what's happening here it, <laughs> it's wild isn't it this is crazy um wow and it's equal look at the eval bar okay they like black obviously i mean i would too but wow okay yeah. okay wild line wild line so you have to go bishop d5 then in that line instead of bc to not allow this counterplay so what happens on bishop d5 but yeah this is what i was trying to understand so presumably okay, cool. you take Take, take. Because otherwise the bishop will come back to b3. So right. Rick takes and let's get let's get munching. Rick get takes frisky b3. Frisky here. Frisky. Rick takes something. A5. So Rick to 
D1? Oh, rook takes A5, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's figuring I... out which rook, though, but this is the question. Hmm. Yeah, which one? Okay, I'll a take with the... Yeah, let's take with the A rook. I mean, it's weird, but... No, no, we got to take... It's weird, the... isn't it? We have, to it. we have to keep the E... We got to keep that rook on the, uh, on the first rank. Cause no, because you, you have back ranked. You got bank rankers, right? Yeah, it's just too much no, going don't. on with the back rank, right? It's just too much. Yeah. Ricky one, take, take. Oh, but this is the kind of situation where, yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult to win. White is an extra pawn up, but the pawns are on mm. the same size. Yeah. There's not that many pieces on the board. Probably right. a draw. Probably. Okay. 100% yeah, so this one, well. this one could just fizzle out into a draw. But uh, a5 on the board, and knight to e1 is the computer's best choice, but things sharpen up after c4. Knight to h4 was my suggestion. And we have a move. Knight g5. Knight g5. She just all Knight you know, g5. I, I like that, and we live. Okay, okay, I see you. Oh, she's swinging. Hold on, she's trying to hit her with the little two-piece spicy. I see what she's doing. She got bishop d5 on pre. She like maybe thinking about if you go h6, can I do it anyway? Kind of day, you know, like uh -huh. she is, she is, she's out here. I thought she was being prime. smart about it and then go knight h3 and knight then go knight f4. Heat, I like the knight g5 idea there. It's nice, isn't that's, it? Knight to g5, nice. h6, knight, and I then just calmly walk back. We're going to go to f4, but I don't know what's happening after c5. Oh, well, yeah, actually, no, c4 is a spicy move. And now the knight on h3 does change some imbalances here. You don't want to get caught, but then the knight can go f4. Okay, I was I was just saying, don't get caught with like yeah. a rook on d5 and loose knight on h3, queen e6, but you have knight f4. So you're good there. You're good. This one's going to get spicy. It's just a matter of time. And like two moves, something feels like it's going to happen here. Yeah, nice. I suspect that the game will quickly like be filled with fireworks and then I think it's just going to fizzle out into a draw. That's <laughs> my prediction. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, remember right. Tan, she is in impressive shape. So I think she'll be yeah, able to handle right. the complications here. But knight to g5, very nice move, threatening bishop takes d5. And remember this queen on c2 and this knight on g5, they are powering towards the h7 point. So black has to be a little bit careful and maybe we go to the uh, bird's eye view and have a look at some of the other games. Here we go. Because like I mentioned, it looks very, very stormy out there in some of those games. Uh, where is your eye going to? Mine is going to Humpy against Muzichuk. Uh, no, also the game between um, Lagno Salimova. Yeah, those two are, are are the main ones I'm looking at as well. Definitely because of the the spice on both f6 on one game, and then you know that pawn on e5. That's probably going to be the spiciest game is Lagno Salimova. Miss a chick one. Oh, oh Lagno oh, like yeah, uh, yeah. Bring yeah. up. This is already queen on g5. Yeah, I think that's yes, going to be so. something. Yeah, so during the break, I had a little bit of a, a kind of not a heart attack, but I got very excited because I thought that we were going to see the trick live <laughs> on air with the queen coming to g5 and a yeah. knight coming to h4. I thought, oh my goodness me, like right. I was fallen for it. But no, 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 it was fine. It was white to play. And this is the position that they got. And now e5 is most critical move and knight to f4 played well this knight and queen they are threatening queen takes you too so if you make some random move like knight to c3 oh bad news this oh. queen takes g2 is going to be checkmate so lagno needs to deal with this i think you might you i think i have to go queen e4 maybe queen e4 like, you know i think we have a move wait no she She's played g3, g3. Oh, okay. She's on G3. G3. Wow. She Which is quite nice as well. I like it, though. I like it. Stop, stops. 92 is covered. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. What you got? It's important here not to get too ambitious and go knight to H3. Because if you do this, look at this. Knight, yes, you have an aggressive piece, but that's about it. There's no right. coordination whatsoever with the queen and knight. So all white needs to do is go king to G2 and then start advancing this pawn. And whereas 
this pawn on d7 it's just going to be eternally weak so 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 no knight to f4 but where to go do you go back where you came from or my preference is to go knight to e6 but i can yeah. see the evaluation bar says no the problem here i think is uh okay so this is a very i like the opening choice but then after some you know she didn't choose the right route she was supposed to go with bishop d4 and castle to keep the knight on c6 one thing that i remember actually just studying chess wise is learning that you want to take the developed pieces from your opponent so like if mm -hmm. you can keep yours and take theirs you have a, a lead like you're just better right so i think we're seeing that here from white is like you know okay you have pieces out to develop but i'm actually you know more developed as white i have my my king castle i'm one move away with knight c3 rook star connected black still has to castle move the light square bishop and get the rooks connected so there's a lot here so uh there was also a move that just happened too by yeah the way. she went for the counter attack which i i was started to think about i like that because yeah, I, I like this one as well, because this bishop has some limited options, right? It can't go to e2. It needs to cover the e2 square as well on account of knight to e2 check. So if this bishop drops back to a4, let me just show you. Knight to e2, just uh, forking the king and queen. So where to go? You, have you can win a pawn yeah. with bishop takes d7, but I wouldn't right. recommend it because you gift yeah. white you gift black the light squares and that's good compensation for those squares so i would recommend where what bishop c4 yeah i was thinking maybe bishop, bishop c4 yeah bishop c4 and and then you could knight? go 96 now 96 uh, the idea for black is like i want to go 96 and have you take me but whoa, the Avon bar jump crazy there. Yeah, 96 is just not going to work. And I think I think overall it doesn't work because if I don't take and move the queen, eventually you still have to solve your development problems. The knight is kind of weird on e6. Also, f4, f5 is coming. Yeah. But I mean, practically, it's great though. Yeah, 96 just looks good. Right. So I guess that you just go queen to e4, e4. and then good. you back that up with f4 f5 right. and the f pawn is just going to be steamrolling down to f6 so yeah so maybe you have to go in for the penny in for the pound with b5 my goodness i thought the same thing and now i thought bishop f7 will be going down this really dank line here takes takes king takes and then I have to wait. Is H four move? No, I don't need to do that. H four. H four. We got knight two. Yeah, knight two. Just trying to be crafty, and, right? So and yeah, and instantly. But this so is the this is the benefit of uh, <laughs> being a commentator. We got the power of take back, and right. then this is the thing: the rook is trapped. <laughs> yeah, you can just. Yeah, man, it's funny. You can just go through these lines like this. Queen takes F four has to be the move after that, and then I mean. Right. Black's okay. Like Black's fine. I got the doubled F. I might even take yeah. Black in some cases. Some like rare. Right. Some, you could live with your king quite happily. I don't know where, F, but you can just see a situation where the rook comes to F8. The bishop comes to. I'm, I'm not sure whether the bishop even needs to move. Do you think? I mean, oh. well, did, I need to get my... the other active. So maybe I don't know. Bishop H3 with tempo, but. Or Bishop B7 is also good, but yeah, maybe Bishop I like B7. It. Maybe I shouldn't be so dismissive. It's the most natural move because yeah. I kind of wanted to go Rook F8 and then King E6 and and then and Nigel short King walk like King H get a King on H3 and a Rook on like G6 and you have mating ideas somehow. Very yeah, strange. yeah. <laughs> Nigel short King. No, that walk. would be awesome and to see. <laughs> no, but I mean I agree with you. I think Black has full compensation there. So after A6 what to do could you go on the counter-attack with your h4 idea hang on so maybe you know because you you suggested so i suggested b5 yeah b5 maybe look, now look, we go we go on the oh, counter now h4. Oh, the Lord, so that h4. i can take yeah so white can take on f4 with but there's still queen h6 oh. which is the one thing i saw so queen h6, I mean, it's just kind of an insertion of h4. Oh, but I could take with the pawn. That's a difference. That's a big difference now. Hmm. Yeah, but you, do you really don't really want to. Be, but may, maybe, maybe white shouldn't even be allow, allowing b5. Maybe 
Yeah, but then you got maybe go. first go H. Maybe go H four first. Oh no, oh, H four is gonna lose. How does it lose? I don't know. Oh, 96 and like stare at you real uncomfortably. 96. 96 is nasty. But wait, wait, wait. No, no wait. That doesn't work. Bishop D7, take, take, take. I mean, C2 is hanging too. So what do we do here? I guess. I'm ah, you just take the bishop. You take the bishop and after pawn takes queen. Oh, the 92. Crafty. Crafty. Yikes. Yeah. That is, that is uh, bad. So what you're going to do is go. F I thought maybe you just go drop the bishop back to d3. I'll be happy as black immediately. I'm like, perfect. I'm back in the game. Like, I mean, well, I'm not that I'm I'm just uncomfortable as black. But now I'll just take and like, I'm always, a not always, it depends on the position. But rarely are you like, oh, I got the bishop versus knight and I feel worse with the bishop. It depends yeah. on the position. Plus, you gave up the best piece you have against the king. So light squares forever weak. I'm fine as, uh, yeah. as black with that idea a6 beautiful move from yeah that was nice Sell him over maybe maybe you need to go bishop takes d7 i don't, don't that know was really good but lovely decision from salimova just to counterattack this uh, bishop on b5 and just ask white what are you going to do yes you can win a pawn but you're going to give up the light squares i think uh salimova doing well here Shall we go back to the uh, bird's eye view? Let's do it. And maybe check in on the game between uh, Anna Muzicic and Humpy Canary. Yeah, let's take a look at that one. This is reminiscent of a, what do you call it? It's like a Joko piano or a Scotch gamut that reads a Joko piano without the bishops, believe it or not. Like or when white has no bishops, which is so funny to have a Joko piano type position, but without any bishops for white. Usually you will reach this position, and this pawn structure happens a lot with white having bishops steal, in fact. But having no bishops here is very interesting because, you know, rook c1. I mean, white's definitely pressuring um, uh, black here with rook c1, hit the pawns. Is material even? Three, six, seven, three, six, seven. Yeah, I'm taking white all day. Yeah. All day. Yeah, all day here. And how did this develop? Because we... We were looking at this on knight g6 d4 there were some checks yeah we we came to knight this is the decision time castles castles and yeah after d5 bishop takes c6 b takes c6 e5 and then f6 yeah Rookie and f6 one, played this is easy for white i'm not gonna lie she just got an easy position the ov this could be this is very easy for white you just go rook c1 you can go knight b3 knight c5 like it's going to be difficult for black and we may need to stick h3 in there because bishop g4 is going to be really annoying so we need to deal with that but other than that white has a risk-free position it feels like knight b3 knight c5 okay. we have clear plan clear plans for white black can't stay the same yeah yeah we have a clear target right the, the pawn on c6 so how to deal with that i guess you have to just generate the counterplay so after rook to e1 if this bishop comes out to g4, you I, presumably you're going h3. h3. You're asking the questions immediately. And if one takes on e5, you can see I the evaluation really bar inching up. Yeah, hmm? yeah. I really want to take with a pawn here. I, I know knight takes is probably the better move, but I do like having this pass. It reminds me of some type of Grunfeld, but you get this pass e pawn and the c pawn still weak. It's like hanging pawns, like like in the other game with uh, Gory Chikina. Um, yeah. Can and, black uh, go c5 yeah. here? I was thinking the same thing. Maybe we're and then go for C4. Mm, that's annoying because he can go C5 twice. Like a scotch gambit. That's crazy. Yeah. C5 twice. Oh, but mm. if we don't go for the complications and head for the simple, because I'm Night lazy. Take. <laughs> <laughs> Night takes. And, and as long as you've got Queen C4, yeah. you've got the answer. You know, this knight can just come to F3. We're Night. good to go. Easy. And um, like you said, it's easy game. Yeah, easy game. Scary. That's why. No, no, F takes E5. What other moves could be possible? Also, take a look at, uh, at Anna's body language. You can just tell how comfortable she is. She like looking around. She's chilling. You know, you can tell she's relaxed. Humpy, on the other hand, is definitely on the, uh, the complete, complete difference, right? You can tell. Now, I think Humpy actually always looks like this. Now that I think about it. I think she always has mm -hmm. the same. You just don't know what's going on with her. Like, even if she's winning, she looks exactly the same. I like that type of stoic 
you know, and this, and this to her that she just, you don't, you can't really tell if she's winning or losing or anything. She always still looks like that. But Anna here, you can definitely tell she feels relaxed in this position. And, you know, the position does say that so as well. Yeah, it definitely does. But I don't know, I, f I feel like Black has to do something because of these issues. Hang on, is there any issues with C5 immediately? Well, you know what? We are doing analysis. So let's just, let's just like, you know what? White, we know what white has. We know your trumps. Okay, you know what? Let's let's play against them. So let's go F5 here, Yovi. Pawn F5. F5. I don't care about nothing. Engine says, what are you doing with your life? But at the same time, here practically. But I'm doing your plan, right? <laughs> and my plan was to go like 97. Or Bishop. <laughs> this is ridiculous, bro. <laughs> Because white just <laughs> white has a great game. Like, is you just we're trying to make things up here because white has a great position, right? So, it's uh this yeah. is what we're doing because this yeah, yeah, you don't but, want to but take, you your your plan was just fantastic, Rig C one. So you have to fight that one with activity over yeah. everything. So, but how to do that? Maybe we go maybe Rook to B eight first. Okay, B three. I do like Rook B eight actually. Well, then, then if you go B three, your knight oh, should be on B three. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit happy there. Oh, we have a move. She's gone for F takes E five. Yeah. F takes E five, and you remember the evaluation bar was like that is not a good move when we tried it out, mm. and yeah, don't go for the complications after D mm. takes E five because well. yeah, White might be doing quite well there, but quite complicated. I understand. This is where my style creeps in, right? <laughs> my laziness. Laziness. <laughs> I just want to go knight yeah. takes e5, and yeah, I just want to live the simple life with my glass Easy. of wine glass in the of sun. Wine. Frolicking in the frolicness, you know. Exactly. Very nice. Knight takes exactly. e5. I mean, how to handle this? Knight takes e5, and okay, well, I mean, it might not be Ooh, such yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's knight to f4. And uh, maybe the computer is like, yeah, 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 I'm laughing at you. You can just go nice. I don't know. It doesn't well, laugh. It doesn't yeah, laugh. That's I'm going to say, you're right, it's though. Queen actually. to G5. Yeah, hey, hold on, big dog. Yeah, Queen G5 is a move. Queen F3, you go Knight H3. That's what she's banking on. She's going to go Knight F4. And then she's going to make Yeah, if you go Queen F3, problems. just to show Kanti's yeah. point, that would be a big mistake because the Rook is opposite the Queen. And... Yeah, we have knight takes e5 on the board. And so maybe knight h4 yeah, knight or knight to f4. Let's, let's put the but knight on knight f4. Four, right, knight f4, because, okay, I'm definitely, like, engine creeps up, yeah, but from a human standpoint, my next move is queen to g5. And when that happens, it's going to be scary for white. So we need to deal with this. And also, you can't go g3 because the rook file is open. I think practically this was awesome from uh from Humpy, uh, if she's able to play knight of four, though. Knight of four, mm -hmm. just make, you know, make some complications. I know my position's worse. Can she do this? Make something happen. Knight to, no, is the answer. Knight to f1. Mm, that's was, a good question. So though. just to meet queen to, I like the way you said queen to g5. I, I've got to <laughs> copy that. <laughs> I got you, Yogi. Oh, so, 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 the queen to g5, the fifth. Fifth. Yes, the, fifth, queen. the fifth rank. Ooh, and she played that with some style. I could tell. Oh, but she played queen f6, though. So. Well, that one, I was not expecting okay, that well, I feel good. Incidentally, so, so before we go into queen f6, I'm kind of curious. What is the computer suggesting against the knight to f4? Right. Ah, it says you just do this. Wow. And it was like, yeah, deal with your threat. Tells us. Silly human. Knight of three. Silly human. Ha, 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 yes. ha, ha. Right. Okay, queen to f6. And... Oops, queen to f6, and now, okay, the big issue is what to do against its suggestion of knight df3. Uh, I could, well, okay, that's too much. But, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I was just going to go h5, h4. Like, I just, it's just always in me, as in, innate, that I always think aggressive first. And so I was like, oh, h5, mm -hmm. h4 is just push the h-pawn. I mean, I, go, I want a, a day where I can play h3 and create some holes around the king. I mean, it is possible. h5, what happens on h5? If you just completely lose like engine just kills us as usual. Yeah, yeah. well, the the engine will just laugh at you like yeah, nine times out of ten. Well, actually, what am I talking about? Nine times out of ten? Ten times out of ten. Right? Do this. But a human would be terrified, right? Because you can go H4, H3. H3, like, you know, and just really try to cause some problems. 
exactly and the issue though is if i just completely laugh at you and go rook c1 wow rook c1 jesus man <laughs> this, yeah. this is so I, good. I, I saw the pawn on c6 and i want it i, I want it yeah. all really yeah knight of four can't do anything yikes and knight is really gross okay so go back instead of h5 is there also... a knight of four anyway yeah but th this knight is really annoying though because it covers the squares you know it covers g6 it covers a g5 right so but maybe you can go rook to b8 okay that just was always an empty move just yeah, i just activate, activate the rook but yeah. I, I mean the evaluation yeah. bars is like no what are you on about but um yeah simple chess <laughs> right can't play simple chess you can't play no chess around them dog it just doesn't even make sense Okay. Uh, hang on, wait one second. What happens if you go knight takes knight? Let's just play simple. Okay, chess. we have to go D. Knight right? takes knight. Well, we knight takes knight has to be done, right? Hmm? Uh, no, I think we have to take with the D pawn, though, right? Queen of two. So we have yeah, yeah let's go D to, D, takes... and then queen where? Where are you going? F4, E7. F7. E7. Hang on, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe G. G6 oh yeah, just... G six. Stay around the. Stay around the. G six. Stay around the king. Yeah, yeah. yeah. H three is a real threat with Bishop G four next. With Bishop H three, yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. And I also, mean, this is bar. this it's is the big idea. Bad. Bishop to G four. No, no, no. This is not that bad. Yes, the pawn on C six is a terrible long term weakness, but right. for the time being, Humpy has play on the light squares. Bishop to G four is coming. This queen is bearing down against the king. Not so easy. Not yeah, easy that's not at easy all. at all. That's not easy. That's not easy at mm -hmm. all. Shoot. I mean, I was thinking something bailing out like Queen B1. But even now, I was like, nah, dude. You go, we got to get rid of some of this stuff. Queen B1. What happens if you just go Rook to E3? E3. Bishop H3 and G3. Yeah, then, then, then I then, that was the big idea to go Knight H4. Oh, look at the little tactics. Rookie three, yes, nasty. Okay, rookie three. So then you just have to develop or something. I still yes, like, white. like everything is good for white. Every position we've looked at just came out to be better for white. Yeah, because like twenty moves down the line, it's seeing that this pawn on c six is disappearing. It's but disappearing. we're not right. even going to get that, right? Yeah, because right. humans just don't think like that. <laughs> Correct. Correct. So, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe yeah. rook to. I mean, I, I would be terrified. Rook b eight. Again, mm. you can just see the evaluation bar just laughs wow. ha, ha, ha. every Pretty single time. Crazy. I tried to make an active move. I mean, it says no, B3 Dang. wasn't the best. But, That's you know, you can just see a, your future. I just wanted to show, like, this type of chess, Rook to B4. Oh. Rook is swinging over. This bishop is now threatening to come to H3. Showing some potential there. Very strong. Yeah. Very, very strong. Yeah, this is practical. I like it though. I like it from Humpy. She's making problems. She's like, hey, solve this. Like, okay, you might be better, but you do have to solve these problems and you better be super accurate. Yeah. And great decision there from Humpy. Queen to F6 and asking the question for Anna is she going to just simply go knight df3? Or is she going to drop this knight back, knight ef3? But then that feels very, very passive. Do you think we might even see moves like knight takes g6? But then Ooh, that, that's g6. giving you a Correct. Yeah, why are we doing that? Yeah, the principal move is like move the move, the uh, the d knight to f3. I think there's any yeah. other real options, in fact. I mean, I guess you're going to try okay. f3 with the idea of knight b3 at some point and literally just shutting everything down. And then knight b3 and rook c1 and queen e or d2. And I chill. And like I got the strong knights on e and c5. It's a good day. Yeah, f3, perfectly fine. And I'll just check in the engine. It says best move is knight df3. Wow. That, that was the best. Knight takes e5. We actually found it, Kanti. That is black's best. It might even be the, it's actually the only move that black has wow. in this position. Wow. Like knight takes e5 to just maintain the balance. After d takes e5, queen g6, it's just saying you go either rook to c1 or you go knight to h4. Hey, knight h4 cool stuff from the engine here.
Yeah. But whether Anna will manage to have that ice blood in her veins is going to remain to be seen. I also I must say, I really like your F3 move. Yeah, because solid. when in doubt, just Boy. keep it solid. And I feel Black probably will have to go C5 and yeah. try to unbalance the position. Because if you yeah. don't do that, then white is going to get that grip on the c5 square that's exactly right f3 is very solid of course we saw ben feingold in chat earlier he says never play a figure f6 things do happen in fact we already have f6 in a game um in this game already happened f3 and f6 on this game yeah. right here could happen possibly yeah potentially this could get very very exciting it all depends on how anna continues and we're going to head into a break. And when we come back, we will definitely be catching more of the action. But remember, something revolutionary is coming to chess. Chess.com is thrilled to support fellow game changer Chess Up, the record breaking company taking the gaming world by storm with their brand new Chess Up 2. This physical electronic board syncs to your chess.com rated games, which you can then save and analyze on chess.com. With built in Wi Fi, a touch screen, and touch sense pieces, Chess Up 2 supports beginning players players and training, and casual games between friends and family. For a limited time, save $100 when you pre-order your Chess Up 2 on Kickstarter now. So head over to go.chess.com slash chessup2 or use exclam chess up in chat to unlock this offer and take your game to the next level. Are you struggling with chess? Is your only hope of beating your opponent by using a big stick? A really, really big stick? Introducing Aim Chess, the revolutionary solution for those suffering from chess challenge syndrome. Aim Chess provides a unique blend of concentrated tactics, opening training, and deep analytics to help you claw your way out of sucking at chess. Say goodbye to Bishop Blunders, Knight Nightmares, and Queen Catastrophes. Master the fundamentals of chess and learn how to turn your chess frown into a chess crown. The Aim Chess secret formula is made with real grandmasters and magic. Thanks to Aim Chess, I've learned how to do a smothered mate. They never see it coming. I didn't have any friends before I used Aim Chess. Now I can play chess. So try Aim Chess today. What could possibly go wrong? Consult your doctor before using Aim Chess. Do not use Aim Chess if you are pregnant, allergic to Grandmaster, operating heavy machinery, operating light machinery, or enjoy sucking at chess. Side effects may include nausea, dizziness, loss of hair, excessive celebration, increased ego, and an uncontrollable desire to challenge people to games of chess. Taking Aim Chess with alcohol may result in false confidence and massive rating crashes. Please consult your opponents before consuming Aim Chess. Shali were to win the candidates and then the world championship, she would be India's first women's champion. First, she has to win the candidates. Like her younger brother Pragnananda, who is also competing in Toronto, Vaishali is rising fast in the chess world. She entered the Grand Swiss in October, seeded number 12 out of 50. But with some brilliant play and an undefeated 6 wins out of 11, she climbed all the way to the top. The win put her into the candidates. Here, she is one of just two players who has never played for a world championship. Will that relative lack of experience be an issue? Or will Vaishali be as equally unfazed as the player who won the Grand Swiss? We will find out. Whatever happens, Vaishali's future is bright.
We are back after that short break and well, excitement is brewing. It's round seven. We are at the halfway mark of the women's candidates, everything to play for. And as I remind you constantly tomorrow, it is a free day for the players. But the players are completely unfazed by this and they are going for it, aren't they, Canty? And there we can see it's the bird's eye view. Which game do you want to go to? I suspect that we should maybe pop in and Leighton J against that Vishali. Absolutely. Let's go over there and see what they're doing. See how's it going. We haven't been there in a minute. There's also a knight looking like it's going to land on F5. Whose move is it? It is Vishali's. Shall she let the knight go to F5 or not? And she's following your plan, which you said is easy. Remember, the only difference is that she's put her bishop on B6. Why is the mm. bishop better on a7 or no difference? Just one of those things. Yeah, it's, no, it's one of those things uh, that usually just kind of stays out, out of the way. And I actually now don't think about theory wise. I don't even remember them even pushing the b pawn to b5, but it really is just out of the way on a7. b6 would be a, usually a lot of times if a knight is attacking the bishop via a4 or d3 or something, you go back to b6 or a7. But she went back to b6. I guess it, it makes sense. There's no problems with it. This is definitely a shoot. This could be this could get sharp quite quickly. I see how the eval bar likes black probably like a point three something like that, and I can see that based off of the activity. Black is is able to actually launch you know some attacks on the king side, but also white having that less that one pawn in the center like black does, and then you compare pieces, you start to see that black has a little bit maybe just slight as it is to sit on the engine, activity over uh, white does, especially with this monster bishop yeah. on b6, bearing down on the weak point of f2. So there's a lot of things that can happen still. Rich position. Yeah, totally. And whilst, when I was commentating with Casa, he was saying that the break is almost always d5. That's is d5 going to happen now, or is it just like too much because of the bishop taking on g6? Yeah, D five maybe a little much. Takes, takes, takes. D five. Okay, let's takes. let's put it up on the board because we can. Yeah, takes, yeah, it takes. Let, takes. Uh, I got a which, signal right here. Yeah, but... hang on, hang on, hang on. You go. <laughs> I'm losing <laughs> control. <laughs> There's too many <laughs> captures on the board. <laughs> There's too many. There's too which many. one? Which one? Bishop takes nine. Yeah, or maybe Bishop takes G six. I like Bishop takes G six. Bishop takes G six. Okay, and then F takes G six. I was going to go queen b3, but then I saw c6 and realized, dang, what am I doing really? Yeah, c6 wait, wait, wait. solid. Oh, c4. Ah, oh, bishop, c4. bishop takes knight. Bishop takes knight, yeah. knight keeps it yeah. all together, yeah. and black is going to be better. Okay, mm. so. Spicy. Spicy. Dang, yeah, c6. And... Wow. No, it's... I mean, in that case, it's not that bad, actually, the opening. Because this rook can just move over to f8. Right. And, and put pressure that. against f2. And like you mentioned, you just tuck your king away in the corner. This knight is strong Ooh. on d5. That's a, that's a stallion. That is a stallion. Yeah. So, and this knight is dominated. Oh, okay. So we might, it might be okay. You may be not, maybe it's not a good idea to capture on g6. Mm, you are correct. That. Okay, so what do we do? Hmm, maybe we don't take. Maybe we try to use the f5 square. Queen f3. Oh, Ooh, that's know. nice. I like that. I, I don't that. know. Queen like f3, f3, attack this knight on d5. But then still c6. Rolling. And knight h4 is oh, yeah, coming. Yeah. I mean, knight f5, yeah. like I'm going there at some point. I'm for probably the g knight, so I can have queen g3 for the, square, for the uh, queen. g3 square for the queen. Uh, I can't make up my mind. I, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of think I, I feel the same as you with Knight and G, but then other, the other time I'm like, you know, we could do a little, Maybe. we could have some fun, right? With the other Knight coming to A5 and Look, type. Tango, let them nice dance. Uh, yeah. Or is there any kind of. Bishop takes A6 have... is almost working, but it doesn't work. Mm? I know. It's so it close, work. isn't it? Yeah, so this this doesn't work yet. Knight uh, five is this knight came out to h five. Oh, uh, I mean, I was looking at knight h four. I, I don't know. Let's let's go towards the center. Let's follow the rules. Knight g f five. You can't go right. wrong with this. Okay. Let's do it, and then 
Yeah, what next? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking that for black. I was like, what do you do? You may, I feel like I'm about to strike here with white. My pieces are in range. The bishop's point, like, this is, and that's crazy that the engine says equal, of oh. course, obviously for them, but man, you but, are a, but I mean, wait, wait. a puzzle rush. Wait away. one second. I have an idea. So, okay, so knight here, I was thinking, what would black play? Black right. would probably go queen f6, right? Oh, knight h6. Oh, that doesn't work. You're right. Okay. It doesn't work right. because this knight is protecting the queen. <laughs> but let's just show let's just show that knight h6 yeah, is a beautiful yeah. idea and it's something that black would have to bear in mind. But after pawn takes knight, queen takes queen, knight takes queen. And the great thing about these type of tactics, even if they don't work in this exact position, they're definitely always available in other type of positions and you can use that pattern recognition to help you come to decisions in other games but here i was kind of using that idea maybe we should go rook takes rook first okay so, so get that queen get that queen to go to e8 and then come in mm, then knight f5 spicy then knight okay. f5 then knight like f5 but yeah or or, or maybe I don't, I don't know maybe maybe rook to maybe That's rook fine. to e1 now and then Indeed. the queen goes here and now we jump in with our knight either to h5 or to f5, or f5. we, we yeah. control it and then white controls everything right i mean our pieces are great everything's on the king side harmonious pieces develop yeah aiming at the king it just has to be something there as a okay, human, right? So, you're banking on <laughs> yes well that's how chess is you bank on your, your opponent's mistake or you capitalize on it but engines like equal they like white a little bit but no i'm definitely taking white all day in these positions yeah okay okay but that was bishop to d2 and that was uh black breaking out with d5 which that was such a long line a tree. <laughs> that was a long line uh, and, uh, yeah it was there. it was just going d5 and then taking and maybe black should be the one actually going rook takes e1 on account right. of queen to f3 yeah and then but uh that was quite instructive though like how the position just comes to life if one person just makes their move in the center it's kind of indicative of why these type of positions are so difficult to play so no no d5 i don't think they surely will go for that but what other move can she go for yeah this is a lot of moves here let me think about it yeah i was thinking 95 at least it's a tempo this is a tempo and i mean it gives me access to the c4 square if you move off of that diagonal so you may have to go bishop f1 to try to keep the bishop Mm -hmm. but then, then what next i was just saying like an hour <laughs> and for my next <laughs> trick uh yeah a4 right. maybe i i don't know i'm just exactly. grabbing space <laughs> out, yeah. a4 exactly f4 now f4 knight g6 queen f3 now it's reminiscent of some type of sicilian whoa that's a huge error apparently what is the move what, why is is it to do with yeah maybe knight c6 and a bishop e3 knight, knight c4 yeah knight takes oh, e4. that's a bit clinical there knight takes e4 yeah wow and you drop Banner the pawn hard. jeez yeah that's yeah yeah but you can keep it in the air because but it just goes to show right that if it's difficult to come up with a plan for black it's going to be the same for white right. maybe you can go queen c2 yeah, Queen C2 is nice. And we have a move. We, are, we have a move. We don't have to wait too long. Oh, Knight <laughs> E5 indeed played. We, just went down this line. Okay. we were looking at Bishop to F1. I love Bishop F1. It's a nice kind of safety first move as well. It just kind of covers this H3 square. It maybe goes you know queen, what? You know what? queen C2 and then F4. Bishop yeah. C2, though. What if we just go Bishop C2? Because that was our idea, was to yeah, play it. Maybe a knight comes here, though. And then bishop c1, and then walk away. And bishop c1. And literally get yeah. up and walk away from I the had table. no, I had no answer to that other than... <laughs> bishop c1, <laughs> and then play b3, and then knight e5, and then f4, then queen f3. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That is insane. And it's equal. It's fine. It works. But it is something. Bless you. Bye. Oh, thank you <laughs> you're good <laughs> yeah. i uh i have these because it's quite late here in norway and i'm a bit of an yeah. early bird so i have some i have uh, some oils that kind of just keep oh. me awake 
Yes. You know, yeah. they're just like eucalyptus oil, you know. So Oh, that's so nice. That'll open you up too. The eucalyptus, what you Yeah, about? exactly. Okay. Come on. Bless you, Yvanka. There you go, Anita. Thanks for the help in chat. There Thank you. Chat say, Bless you, um, Yvanka. Bless you. <laughs> it's so nice to have chat interaction. <laughs> I <laughs> I need to get that gaming screen. I was given oh, the yeah. tip that uh, you, one should always have a gaming screen so you can. You know, I bet you got you screen. probably got the setup with one screen and a trackpad. You're not even using the mouse right now, probably. You got a mouse or not? Yeah, I'm using a mouse. I'm using you a mouse. I, 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 I've got just two screens and a laptop. Oh, you got the oh, yeah. she got the three screen. Oh, three screen uh, nice. and a laptop. Yeah, but Bishop C two, Bishop C two is. Uh, it happened? Oh is, no! Uh, it's a nice move. Right. I like it. Bishop C2, I, I like it. It's, yeah. Okay, but your king consequences though, right? Mm -hmm. Because every move has a consequence, and maybe yeah. I don't jump in with the knight to c4, okay. but the king side is a little bit neglected, and that's making me a little Ooh. bit excited. Although I can see the evaluation bar goes, that's just bluffing. Yeah, who cares? I don't even care. I'm tired of them today. Uh, whatever. No, yeah, maybe might have, you can just jump in with your knight to f5 and yeah. laugh, laugh, laugh all the way to the bank. Yeah, one of the nice two yeah. or five would be good. Yeah. Okay. Well, this there no, the, I don't no answer to this uh, bishop c two. Yeah. Maybe I just, just maybe just a four. Just a four and uh, when stuck for a plan, push a four to go a three. <laughs> I heard it from you, Baker. Guys, you don't have a plan. Play a four. That's it. You know what I mean? Well, you don't have a plan. Play a bishop f one. Bishop F1, F1, your first in instincts was what uh, Lady J went for. Now, hopefully, and she doesn't go for the F4, though. F4 was my idea to back this knight up, but that is actually a blunder, in fact, because of mm -hmm. knight C6, which I'm sure she can spot that. She would spot that. Yeah. Right? She but it is definitely difficult. would spot that this uh, bishop is lining up against this king. So mm -hmm. you do need to have patience in this position. So again, it's very, very difficult to come up with a plan for black. Yeah. You know, a, that's why I suggested a four, just because somehow you kind of want to connect the rooks. I'm a big fan of connecting the rooks. Do you ever do moves like C6 or is uh, that too yeah. much? Was D5 now a possibility? Oh, that's a sharp one. I'm I'm always a fan of the sharper option. I worked with a coach that helped me with more solidity, solidity and uh, being solid and positional. Um, he helped me a lot, actually. But it was more because I I would look for that. In fact, I remember telling him one time, I'm like, yeah, I saw this line, boom, 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 ripping off the lines. He was like, I would never win that way. He, you know, he was saying in a Russian accent to as well. He was like, I would never win that way. And then he told me that uh, how you play is kind of like how you play. He was like, yeah, I would just do it the, easy, the simple route more like of a yeah. position the way, you know, when this way, yeah. very simple, no tactics, like, so I've learned that. D5 is sharp. C6 is, uh, okay, we can play, let's play, flexibility, you know. Yeah, I would go so you can't stop D5, can you? So maybe, maybe, but then it kind of gives point to the knight coming to F5. But then, okay, so let's, let's look at the sharpest way. Right. I also, it's funny that you should say that about the coach, because I also had a, a coach for a while who was, trying to convince me to go for the simple life because what happens to me is yeah. i like to start off simply yeah. and then at some point things get sharp yeah and i would always go for the path of most material most complications <laughs> um, they would say you know think think about the price of an error you know and they would say yeah, yeah. in this type of position that you got the price of an error is going to be very very high but if you can get a position which is quite calm and you make a mistake, it's not going to be the end of the world, right? You have to make actually 10 mistakes in order to get mm. to that losing position. Mm -hmm. But the problem okay. is, is that you do have to have that level of positional mastery to kind of understand how to actually squeeze out those wins in this type of position. So it's just practice, practice makes perfect. But D5, D5, the D5. evaluation bar staunchly in the middle. Is it on the board? I can see oh, no. Charlie playing it. No, but I okay, so. It. Well, she's a Grunfeld player. D5 is right up her alley. So like, oh, D5? Oh, Grunfeld? Easy. Easy work. Exactly. Now there's no rook takes rook in the air. So maybe your bishop c2 was actually better because then I d5 was I mean, exactly. as attractive. Right. And it deals with the whole e4 thing. Like, 
you know, bishop f1, look, I mean, that's, that's your natural, you know, move is bishop f1, because that's usually where it tucks. It also covers c4. But then you have to mm -hmm. keep looking, and she, maybe she should have spent a little bit more time there, too, as well, even with the Ferruja mistake yesterday, with a very fast bishop b7, a very fast queen f2, very fast mistakes very quickly uh, add up, in fact, especially at this level, where, uh, you know, that it, it just, it's not, he lost from one move. It was a multitude of many small mistakes that lead yeah. to this. So d5. Though I think it's a very nice move. It just opens up the game. My bishops look good. And actually, well, okay, they're both sides are actually one move away from fit completing development, meaning connecting the rooks. So it's equal. Like, I actually, I would take black, though, because that bishop, I love how that bishop sits on b6. But this decision time for white, though, how to handle, do you go f4? Do you allow, do you just trade on d5? Yeah, that's a good one. Is that, wait do a second. Do you go how f4? Can we go f4? Right. I was just thinking that. Can we go f4 now? If you go f4. Knight c6, c5, knight takes, takes, bishop takes, king h1. And I guess we good. Uh, yeah, takes, 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 king h1. And then... H1? Yeah, maybe just h1. Oh, maybe bishop not f2. king h1. Oh, maybe you have to... Ha ha maybe king h2 is needed. Right, no, that's losing. It's even worse. Oh, knight g4. Oh, oh, yeah, goodness. because of knight g4. Yeah, show them that one. That's so nasty. And then h takes and queen h4. Jesus. Yeah, so you like probably heavy. have to go bishop e3. Okay, takes, takes. And the knight something and queen d5. What a You don't line. have to move the knight. You don't have to move Ooh, the knight, though. I see. Thin. You don't even have so to move the knight. You can go c6. And then, and then here, the evaluation bar is in white's favor big time. But, but I'm, I'm not, not a pawn. Sure why. Three, four, five. I'm not a pawn. Three, six, seven. Wait, 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 wait. Three. Yeah, I'm not yeah, a pawn. Yeah, white sacrificed a pawn. Wow. Nah, bro. It, usually, it's hard to do that. It's very hard to, to sacrifice, get this far, and be like, yeah, I'm better. Like, what? No. Like, I mean, I'm down a pawn, and I don't see my clear plan like that. I'm trying to get maybe, maybe there's rook b3. Yeah, rook no. b3 is compensation, I guess. Yeah, rook b3 is not. Queen b3, maybe? No. Mm, b4. Oh, yeah, I have to move the knight there, too. Oh, we got to move. We got to move. Something happened. D5 on the board! It's on the board! Let's go. D5. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we were looking at F4. F4 was very, very complicated. Let's have a look at E takes D5. Yeah. E Simple takes. stuff. Correct. Knight takes D5. And now. Queen H5 is very tempting for me. I'm a big yeah, yeah. Queen H5. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Black, Black could just go back, actually. Knight of six and like whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of ugly. Again. Repeat. All right. You want to get some lunch? All right. Oh. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah. And now, uh, now. Okay. So maybe queen, oh, but the knight, uh, that, that c6 move is going to solidify that knight for like the rest of the game. So like, I don't know. I like queen c2. It's just a off the back rank move. Get it off the back rank. Rook a to d1. Yeah. Like, totally Yavanka style. Like just queen c2. Rook a d1. You queen know, c2. very simple. Queen c2. Keep it calm. Very, very yeah. calm. Yeah. Very calm. I like it. Okay. That. I like it too. Uh, let's uh, leave the players here. It's, you know, Lating J, she does have a decision to make. She has to either capture on d5 or maybe she's going to just amp up the play a little bit. But let's go to the game between Garyashkina and uh, Tanj Jong Yi. Let's uh, put it up on the board because the players now, the queens have been swapped off. And as you can see, there is a knight on g5. Let's backtrack a little bit because I'm kind of curious. How did the players get here? Mm -hmm. And how many moves have been played? Because remember, the players are not allowed to offer a draw. They have to repeat the position. They can only offer a, a draw once they pass move 40. So we left it with knight to g5, and we were liking this, right? There's a right. player against g5. The knight can drop back to h3 reroute itself to f4 but a uh, queen to e5 attacking this knight and now isn't that rook takes d5 oh no. that was spicy dang but a uh, king run for the heels but i mean yeah, uh, there's also nice queen, queen takes a1 <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that was bang. a cold shower yeah, very nice so queen to d2 keeping this knight there and then rook to e8 and oh, now so this is one. where we see us a trade temporary pawn today. and now this yeah, knight, yeah, knight h6 
and this pawn on e2 is falling. Oh, yeah. I think there's going to be a draw where black will have some type of initiative because of e2 falling. When you get to work to the seventh rank, basically, a lot of times it's like, you know, first one to the open file controls it. But a lot of times that first one to the second or seventh rank is exact is going to be, you know, that could be that is initiative swinging. Like a lot of things can happen when a rook on the seventh. But how is it with the counterattacks, right? Because if a knight just drops back, rook takes e2, right. I accept that. But if this rook comes like to d1, oh, we have a move. Something happened. Knight to f3. Uh, knight to f3. Rook takes e2, played instantly. Rook takes e2, yeah. And, and then maybe yeah. now rook to d2. Neutralize. Neutralize is yeah, right. Yeah, I like that. And, and, then, then, and then shuffle then back Knight on c4. Yeah. But this is a draw. Yeah, this is a draw. Well, definitely... but maybe maybe black has to defend very precisely, but I'm just mm -hmm. was just thinking, even if you get this, the rook can come to b4. And then a4 is happening, right? A4 is happening. Yep, that's it. And black is very active, saying like, hey, you better you better be accurate, right? You better be very accurate here. King, exactly. Exactly here. And I, I, I think I, there's no problem for both, uh, both of them to actually hold a draw here. I think this is going to be a peaceful draw. But as Fabi played on with the, uh, I think, was it Nepo? Nepo game? I think Fabi Nepo, mm -hmm. where it was like just draw from the opening. It was just like bishops and pawns or something, something like that. So it's uh, it seems as though, and Fabi played that position on for a long time. Like so, if it seems as though you can play it on, you know, and it's recommended. I mean, even in the old days, you see Capablanca played a king versus. I saw one in game king king eight air versus eight. I was like, how did you get this position? Like what? How is this even in the database? Like what is wrong with you guys? But play the in game out. You play it out anyway. So let's see what happens. Maybe. Yeah. We'll exactly. Yeah. Well, black. Sorry, white might might as well, right? Because you never know what's going to happen with these uh, weak pawns. They're yeah. isolated, they're targets. The rook can come to c1, the rook can come to d1. And it's up to Tan to find the most accurate moves to mm -hmm. liquidate on the queen side and then just get that three versus three on the king side. And it'd be a draw. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. But after a very nice game for both. But okay, let's also not forget that that was me going root to d2. It's not, maybe it's best to keep the whole shebang, right? And maybe you go knight to d2. Mm, knight d2 with king f1 ideas is your idea. I have knight f6. Yeah. So, so if you go knight f6, big, the big idea was to go root to d8. d8, okay. Ooh, king h7, king, king f1. Corner, and then now I like this, your idea and of going king f1. Love double it. Double the rooks. Double the rooks and then... I think I'm coming in. Knight no, G4. I'm not coming in. I've actually let, let the knight yeah. come to g4. Knight g4. Uh, Ooh, wee, it's not without his wrist. I guess I have to go h. So I have to go h3. Oh, that's so annoying. h3 is such a good move. <laughs> such a good little move that you just kind of forget about. Like, how do I get in there? I don't even know. I actually don't have a way. Wow. I can't do anything. g5, g4 is h4. Whoa, that is crazy. Maybe rook f4 with the... Oh, I can't even do that. I'm sorry, rook e5 to rook f5 is what I want to do. But I can't do that without my rook hanging. Wow, that is insane. What a good move. h3. Okay, I actually don't know. Maybe just rook e5. Move the rook off of e2 and move it back to e5 and hope for the best. Can you can you go knight to... No, you can't go knight to d7 because of uh, a high... That, that would be a bis mistake of the Ooh. most epic proportion because after Rick takes knight, Rick <laughs> takes rook, the two rooks are not defining each other anymore. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. Problems. So, yeah, it's it's tricky position, actually. So, that, hang on, let's run through that one again. Okay, so that was rook e2, knight to d2, and this was the knight coming to f3. What happens if the knight comes to... B6, the other way. B6. Rook check, king up. Yeah, let's king go B6. Let's go A4. Yeah, with the A4. So you go yeah. Rook D8, King, king seven. Here you go King F1. F1, and then all the Rook just comes to. Let's put it on a random square where it doesn't get attacked. Rook E6. Mm, the next move is going to be A4, but maybe you can be smart about it and go Rook to B1. B1 or C1? No, let's go with C1. It's more active. Here's the pawn. Yeah, yeah. Is this target C5 pawn? 
And then I go, do I go A4? Do I take? Hmm, no, just, A4, right? Giving up just a pawn. Go A4. I am giving up the C pawn, though. I am just yeah. giving it up. It should be draw, but should be. It's different from doing. <laughs> it is. Yeah, 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 totally. Okay, so but then how to easily draw this? Right. Because you don't really right. want to be suffering. Yeah, I have to go to knight f6 <laughs> route with seven knight b6. Because knight b6 is, I want to get a4 in, but bringing the knight to f6 the other way gives us that knight g4 idea. So white has to pause to play h3. But then, then the knight is a very bad square. Yeah. F6. Yeah, it is. You got to wait. Well, okay, we have some moves. We got some moves. Yeah. Don't worry. King F1 played. Wow, immediately. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just kind of curious what did the computer suggest? Ah, oh, we got it right, Canty. Knight we to did. D2 was the best move. Yeah. Wow. Knight to D2. And would you believe that the next recommendation is Knight to B6? <laughs> so we, we, <laughs> we, were, we were spot on here. King H7. <laughs> King F one, uh, and then the rook goes to E five. Not E5. not because I put it oh, in some random square. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, not random square. Five, yeah. And so uh, when the rook comes to C one, now you can go A four, and you've clarified your inside weaknesses. So was this sweet. was the subtlety. King F one, it is a good move as well. Nothing wrong with that, but this does allow this rook to come to B two. Yeah, I was just thinking just rugby too. I'm like, you know, I'm being annoying. I'm not threatening much, but I'm annoying, and that's what I want. I'm yeah. annoying. Make make that's the rook, right? This rook is never is not gonna I didn't mean to highlight the B3 pawn, but this rook is uh never gonna be in trouble, so don't see the problem. Knight d two, maybe. If we, if we if we go knight to d two, I have the plan of going knight c four, knight takes a five. Okay. Nice C4. Maybe I go. But you still have some time. You, you oh. maybe go knight B6. Oh. Can you go knight B6? Rook takes and then rook takes. Okay. So rook check king H7. Yeah, yeah it is rook takes, rook takes. Yeah, it takes eight. Play take. So rook check. Rook, you have to you have to go check. check. So you have to go check, right? King h7? Yeah. And then? I don't know. Rick. We have a4 don't like this rook, no. Yeah, and black's black's coming with a4 next. So we're gonna take initiative. You know, b take b a knight a knight c3 comes, knight e2, rook mm -hmm. c2, rook b2 as well. It's nasty. Yeah, so black is threatening a4. And uh, just right. eliminating everything. So White Wolf has to find a way to put, keep on putting the pressure. H how to do that? A4? Is, can you do that? Ugh, that's argue. ugly. That's such I, ugly. I know, I know, I know. It's not, it's not my proud, mm. my, not my proudest yeah, moment. Ugly. On the I other hand, I was very worried about A4. I guess you can. I was going to go Rook D7 and trade off. So Rook D7, Rook takes, Knight takes D7, but then there's just King E2. It's just king e2 and you yeah. chill. You chill. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. There's more than chilling. King e1. King c1. Oh, the rook strapped. Whoa, that's crazy. So I have to go knight okay, e5. Okay. okay, yeah. So uh, actually, uh, rather than go king to d1, you go king to d3. So yeah, you absolutely have to go knight have to d5. Go knight five. Only move. And, and now I, have I, go, I go rook c1. Rook c1. That's cute. That's nice. Okay, what do I do? Ooh, yikes. Yeah, okay, that pawn's hanging. C4, not Maybe a move. I go knight g4, knight g4, the active route. So I'm threatening knight f2. Yeah. Oh, wow, engine says that is not a move, though. Dang. Yeah, but can you go here, rook c5? I but take a knight uh, f4. Yeah, f2, I guess you take a5. I go back to g4. Takes, takes, king up, rook b, rook takes, rook takes, draw. Oh, he has rook b5. Oh, snap. Oh, but I take h2. Oh, but you have two connected. It still should be draw. Yeah, it still should be draw. Rook takes rook b2. And hopefully the best know. way. Oh, I, I don't know. know. This is what I don't know. <laughs> Why can not uh, start advancing the pawns? But this was mega deep. Okay, so yeah, let's get back. Right, so right. king f1. King 
King F1 and uh, Tan Zhang Yi hasn't made a move. I'm expecting Rook to be two. But okay. Yeah, Rook B2 makes the most sense. Rook B2, and then this is where I want was thinking knight to d2 with the idea of covering b3 oh we've got a move we've got a move here we go rook b2 and uh we're going to see garyashkina's idea knight to d2 maybe with the idea of going a4 and then rook c1 okay rook b2 okay so Knight D2. Oh, yeah. Now I have ideas already with Knight E5 once again due to uh, the Knight being. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Knight E5. Knight, knight I like E5. Knight. I like that. I like it a lot. Just to be accurate. But okay, I'm going to take. Rook takes. And then I'm going to take C5. Rook Thank E7. you very much. Huh? Rook E7. Rook... Okay, uh, thank you again. Oh, really? A pun? Yes, I will take the pun if you give me I that. take it. Yes. And then I will E six. This is probably a draw. Oh, rook takes right? takes. Yeah, it's probably draw. Yeah, I'm behind. I'm behind the pawn. It's being behind, right? Yeah, yeah, behind. Always the behind the pawn. Always behind the pawn. Oh, we have a we have a move by the way. It looks like she played rook b two. She played rook b two. Yeah, the rook b two. I'm okay. just waiting on that. On that. Okay, let, let me just consult the engine. So we were looking at knight d two, and I don't think we fully like hundred percent equalized. Yeah. Ah, is there, is there ah, a four? Look at this. There is a four. Oh, and takes and rook c two. And then yeah. it says knight f six. Oh yeah, that's too dank. Then you get go. yourself a pass pawn. Ah. Rook check. King eight seven. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's that's engine. That's all engine there, baby. I don't know what yeah, that this is. This is completely oh. engine. That's crazy. And then after after this a three, you just go rook c two. Yeah, that was my and idea. Suddenly it's unpleasant, oh. right? King right. two. Knight will come to g four. Your idea into play with knight takes f two ideas at the right time or knight to e five. Uh, everything yeah. comes. And and black has the compensation. These double day pawns are really not worth that extra pawn. Yeah, that, was good. that was very good. That's very good. That A four idea is nasty after ninety two. So I'm sure she may be thinking that. But you know what else I'm thinking? What move are we on? What move number is this? We are on move twenty four. Oh, that's not good. So I can see it at the top now. Yeah, we're on move twenty four. So and the reason why I say that is look at the time. I mean that you know time is a piece. Like people always. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like it, they don't take it as important as you should, which we know that she is a professional player, but definitely this time deficit does come back to bite you in critical moments. So there is a 30 minute time deficit here um, between them. So hopefully she's able to make the moves quickly. You can see she's kind of tense, body language there, as you can tell. She's getting lower on time, and you do have to continue to keep thinking. So mistakes could happen, as we saw in Faruja Hikaru there. Um, same definitely. idea. Definitely. And uh, one thing Tan does have to play accurately in order to hold the balance. It's not going to be an easy job for both of them. Maybe we go back to the bird's eye view and check in on the other games and see if there are any fireworks on the board. Maybe we can revisit the game between... Um, Hang on a second. Should we go to the game between um, Lagno and Salimova? Let's take a look. Let's head there. And Salimova, yeah, she gave up a pawn. Because we left the position at here. We left it with A6, right? And A6 being a very clever move, we were Oh, impressed. yeah. And what happened after A6? Back to C4, B5, and now the okay. now this is what happened the piece got won and this pawn on c4 it is going to be lost you can't hold on to that one but as compensation black does have the light squares and these doubled f pawns don't make a great impression so f6 played and now rook a to d1 a5 threatening bishop a6 maybe rookie one And oh, a five is the last move. Okay, so, a five is the last move. Yeah. Okay, 
Yeah, this is actually a uh, white is definitely a driver's seat. Obvious reasons. I have an extra pawn, right? So I have an extra pawn. In fact, I saying Lagnus, like, you know, <laughs> Magnus type, uh, Katarina <laughs> Lagno here. That's funny. So having the end game, she's up a pawn and you are playing for two results. That's always the best seat to be in is I'm playing for two results. It's very hard to lose this game. And I'm up a pawn, knight versus bishop. We have an imbalance. The bishop hasn't even moved yet. So, of course, yes, engine says, oh, equal, but that's like engine playing perfect chess. So, here, I'm definitely a fan of her position, her uh, Katarina having white up a pawn here. I mean, you, it takes so much accuracy from the black side to have compensation, quotation marks, and also trying to draw this game or even getting that pawn back. So, practically speaking, uh, Katarina is in the driver's seat here. Yeah. But there is a, there is a threat, right? This bishop coming to a6, pinning this Correct. knight. Correct. And I agree. What you got? Katarina is in the driving seat. But on the other hand, she has to come up with some moves and some plans. And I'm not quite sure how to fight this. Because if you say you go rookie one. Yeah, I like rook fe. Rook exactly. I was like, what do you even do? Yeah. And how is Salimova going to play this is she gonna you might have to start with fe and just like open the file to try to limit some stuff i just don't know what's next like i mean this is kind of like you're limited you can't move anything bishop a6 is gonna come at some point maybe or bishop b7 but you can't even do that like bishop b7 hangs d7 so bishop a6 is i, the have, only... I have an idea you go this you go rook a6, rook a6. okay there we go yeah so fe rook a6 now we're on to something Rook D3 and then check and Rook G3. So I'm trading those. I'm still up a pawn. Nice. Yeah. Like whatever. I'm up a pawn. Rook G3. Yeah, you don't okay, care. Block everything. Very good. Clean. And Very A5 is hanging. Yeah. Okay. No Rook A6. Rook A6. Is... Uh, what happens after that? I'm kind of magically rook trying rook to get. <laughs> huh? The engines went down after Rook D3. So I'm curious what happens after Rook A6, Rook D3. What did the engine see or say? Like, oh, maybe it just calibrated and say it's fine. Okay. I saw rook d3 and it jumped and I was like, oh, what did we miss? So I guess it's okay. Rook c6. Yeah, I don't I don't see what's wrong with it. Rook c6, rook you're just gonna meet that with b3. Yeah, b3 oh, but maybe maybe there's some bishop a6, but right, can't you oh 95? Oh, oh yeah, it's oh, spicy. No. Oh, losing? How? no, no, no. I actually don't know. Rook c5, but I take yours. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that don't make no sense. Rook check, rook g3. I don't understand. It's something dank here. Ah, uh, you go rook c5. But then knight yeah. c4. Yeah, you just go back with the knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a crazy one. All right, Tactino's chat. What is this? Oh, rook c2? I guess this is winning. Oh, immediately. Rook uh, c2. Oh, that's crazy. How that's was crazy. that in our blind spot? Yeah, rook c2. <laughs> rook yeah, c2. yeah, rook c2. Yeah, rook c2. And then rook uh, Yes, Yikes. you can't do that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's but I mean, but really, like, Rick takes D2. Rick D7, yeah. right? I mean, come on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's still, Black has enough activity, but one slip, you're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so let's let's go. I wasn't that comfortable after Rick A6. Yeah. I mean, as Black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How to, how to generate some play. So, Rick FE1 mm -hmm. looks natural, looks good. Is G5 a move or not? Now, G5, no. Usually, you'll see that type just to break the structure down, but that's just unnecessary. We're just trying to find some moves for black. Yeah. Maybe A4. I tell you what, I, I tell you, what you might laugh a little bit, and I, I don't recommend doing this at home. <laughs> King F7. Oh, my goodness. You know it's a bad day in the office. when out of, You got yes. pieces on the board still. And you was like, yeah, let's go King F7. Let's move to King. King yeah, I know. Like I said, yeah. don't try this at home. I'll try this at home, boys. This Congrats. comes with a health warning. And like <laughs> I can see the computer is just like, no. King F7. <laughs> yeah, it's been like, you have lost your absolute. Did you know this is the candidates? Did you know? Yeah. The, the candidates. Okay, King F7. But the, but the issue is, like, if you're not doing something active, what is the plan? Okay, so remember from the other game we looked at, well, like, we, you know, we can just throw moves out here and do this. So F5, whatever. Yeah, yeah. What, what happens if you go Rook A6 now? 
Oh, now that's spicy. And then you go rook to d3. Oh yeah, rook d3 anyway. Okay. I was also going to go a4 just to uh, to wedge that pawn or to um to um fix the pawns. What they say, fix the pawn. Yeah, but then, then there was issues with your king. Oh, you're right. You're right. Correct. So rook d3. And the rook yeah. will swing over to g6. You're right. Correct. Correct. So rook d3 is natural. Looks great. Active. Rook d3 looks it looks good. It's beautiful. And then here the you're just stuck. Move the bishop. Like you. I mean, this is this is not good. What does the engine say? Because they just don't believe in anything. They just don't believe. Ah, oh, we're fried. Ah, oh, we're fried. Okay. Okay, so rook f1 is the top move. And then yeah. when we were going rook a6, rook mm -hmm. e3, one like rook e? d3, rook d3 because a4, it says. What? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just, but, just shut the engine off. Like, okay, bro. Just say okay. Yeah. What? All right. Yeah, yeah. Just a four, but I think white is absolutely fine. And in fact, white is a lot better. I feel like it's just like you say in the driving seat. You've got the lovely way to to solidify the position, and the rooks can come up to the third rank again to protect the king to attack this straggler on a five. And Lagno doing very well against Salimova. Yeah, very well. I like how much time she's Lovely. using too as well. Hopefully it's not, well, I mean, it's on move 17 here. So, you know, and it's a 10 minute between between them two. So not too much. They both are using their time and uh, she should be on the better end of this end game with white. Rick F1 looks great. Yeah. Can, can we go back to the bird's eye view? And I'm just, just hunting down the evaluation bar. And I can see that if you take a look at Leiting J against uh, Vishali. Mm-hmm. Uh, the evaluation bar is in black's favor. Oh, let's go to that game. I mean, first off, you got the you got the the box knights in the center of the board. Like that's just that's something you play at nine sixty. You know what I mean? Like, rarely do you ever get four knights in the center of the board like this. This is pretty cool in a live position. Actually, that's a d five, and you got look at those knights. It's just the aesthetics there is very beautiful, right? It's almost like they planned yeah. that. It is. It is beautiful, but. Why would it be better, slightly better for black? Is That's a something? great question. That's a great question. Let me pay attention here. What do you think is the thing? Hmm. Wow. Everything looks the same. Besides the queen placement, everything is generally the same. Okay, so maybe two things that I would say is number one is maybe the queen being not ideal. It could be hit with A4. It could be hit with other stuff. And also the bishop on f1 compared to the bishop on d7. Yeah, the bishop's cool on f1, but it feels like black's pieces just do a little bit more. Even though everything's like active, everybody's active, but it feels like for what's going on, black's pieces do more. Yeah, totally. And I like this idea of going a4. A4, and, and you know, black is the one with the sacrificial opportunities, right? This uh, bishop can capture on d4, but also this bishop can take on h3 as well. And maybe there's going to be problems for the white king if it gets opened up. Well, 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 we do see the momentum start shifting in Vaishali's favor. But we are going to take a short break. So but don't go anywhere because more of the action to come in just a few minutes. Lagno has been a world championship finalist once before. Now comes another chance. A speed chess star, Lagno was Blitz world champion in 2018 and 2019. In 2022 and 2023, she won the FIDE Grand Prix to earn her bid here. Her key performance was sole first place at the 2022 Astana leg. Lagno did not finish top three in either of her other two Grand Prix tournaments. The Astana win was now 19 months ago, and so Langno will have to rediscover that form to return to a world championship. It didn't happen at the World Cup, or she lost in the second round. Past victories in speed chess won't help. Now is the time to get another chance at the classical crown. Will Lagno's form be found at the candidates? This is chess. Chess is an experience. The excitement. 
the joy, the devastation, the undeniable drive to play again and again. Chess is an experience that's meant to be shared. What if you could experience chess in a completely new way? On a real chessboard with the power of AI at your fingertips. This is Chess Up 2. Take everything you love about playing on chess.com and experience it on a real chessboard. Play a blitz match against a random online opponent. Conquer the bot you've been stuck on for months. Or challenge a friend halfway across the world. Chess Up 2 is always ready and always connected with built-in Wi-Fi. Never miss a move with full piece recognition. And review all your games right on chess.com. Chess Up 2 is more than a chess board. It's a chess trainer. If you're new to chess, Chess Up will teach you. If you already know how to play, Chess Up will teach you how to really play. With patented AI assistance, you can balance a match between players of any skill level or hone your skills against one of the built-in AI coaches. The makers of Chess Up 2 are the same team behind the original Chess Up. The best-selling smart chess board in the world. So whether you're a beginner who wants to learn and improve while you play, or a chess pro who wants to go deeper into the world of chess, experience Chess Up 2 and level up your game. We are back and the action is happening. The clocks are ticking down and we are all set and ready for the excitement that's about to explode on the boards. Canty has been quite the start. We've had opening surprises and here we do see Anna Muzichuk and Humpy Canary. These two players are at the tail end of the tournament. So a victory would be much needed. Anna Muzichuk though, she does look like she is in pole position to just drive the game forward but humpy canary one must never ever write her off because what a contender she is she qualified for this event by rating she's also one of the world's strongest females she is one of the few females to have broken the 2600 barrier and can you take a look at some of these achievements 
She's 2019 Women's World Rapid Champion. And I think it was in 2015 or 2017, I'm not quite sure, but she took a break in order to become a mother and she came back and she feels like she's stronger and fitter than before. She's uh, not just back, she is better. And she did say in one of her interviews that one of the one of the things about this event is that normally she doesn't actually train that hard for chess tournaments she just has her opening repertoires but for this one she trained hard that's very good your training is definitely important they say uh your training or your tournament starts before the tournament oh, it's obvious but definitely saying it he's like oh snap you need to like i mean i was working with the russian coach he was like yeah it's months of before you go in there you work in months and when you think about candidates here even when that break of happened with the COVID thing and the last candidates too, like probably had a year to prep a night or for against uh, NBL. And of course it worked very well for him with the peace side game that he was able to win. So it's important to get that preparation. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. She's not having the greatest tournament, but it's still seven games to go, right? And maybe that preparation will kick in somewhere else, or obviously you do what you have to do and like make the adjustments on the back half of these games here. So. Mm -hmm. And have you ever had a, a tournament where you made a comeback, like a massive comeback? You won the event, you got your norm or? Not massive, but I have one. I had one where I started 0-3 and, and then ended up, uh, this was a norm tournament, so you need seven. And I, I finished with like four and a half or four, something like that, where I still had, I just, the back end was much better than the front. Of course, losing those three, it hurts. Man, it just sucks. And you know, losing those three, bouncing back, and then you go from there. But it's, a lot of it's mental, right? That psych part, which you know as well. It's the mental part. Yeah, yeah. Get that under control. You really can be on to something. Definitely. And uh, Humpy and both Anna, they are very strong competitors in this department. But taking a look at the board, we can see the minor pieces have been traded off. Humpy still has those weak pawns in the center, but then this e5 pawn, I wouldn't necessarily categorize that as a massive strength either. So what do you think about this position? It is a decision time for Humpy. Trade rooks or no? That is a great question. Trading the rooks, I think, would actually give white. It feels like you're going to activate some things for me, but maybe it's just fine. Takes, takes, what, what requires here, which is, of course, the hardest part and the one of the strongest parts, assets, if you will, or of chess, is the calculation part. In fact, in end games, that is the strongest suit. We're the less pieces, but more calculation, in fact, because it is lots of ideas, lots of moves, lots of empty squares you can move pieces to. So after rook takes, queen takes, you have to calculate, do I go rook e8? Do I go queen e6? What happens on that? Like there's queen f7 hitting uh, all type of stuff. Like maybe queen f7 is not going to be a problem, but. Rook e8 is a move. Queen e6 is a move. I mean, maybe even uh, rook b8, like possibilities. You just have to figure out all of these moves in the time that you have, even rook f8 with tempo. So who knows what we're going to do here. But I think I would probably <laughs> take first and then think afterwards with like a rook f8, rook e8, because now it's on me. It's black's move. So if it's white's move here, yeah, I'm going rook c1 and there's pressure. You're losing probably. But or at least it just feels better. But black, on the other hand, it's black's move, so I can maybe try to dictate something. Rook d8, get behind the pass pawn. Rook f8, hit the queen. Rook e8, hit the e pawn. So I have some ideas. Yeah, uh, I, I love some of those ideas. They're, they're really great and really instructive as well. So one of the things that I do when I get an end game like this is that I call them heavy pieces for some reason. I don't know why, but I judge mm -hmm. them on piece activity and king safety. And here, the black king isn't particularly safe. But when it comes to activity, actually, both sides are relatively balanced here. And I really like your idea of going rook to d8 and getting behind a pawn because you've got to understand your assets in this position. I, by, by the way, I didn't even think about rook to d8. But now you said it, I was like, oh, my goodness me. Why? <laughs> that is the solution, right? You get behind your past pawn and you start to push it. Pass pawns because must what be can pushed. white do exactly right. what can white do so let's let's put it into practice so rook to d8 okay, rook d8 you're probably gonna be rook d1 oh wow immediately engine jumped up that's so crazy engine just disrespects you every day like of your life <laughs> you may think that you just play rook d8 i'm gonna push the pawn great plan and then they like psych try again terrible you know rook d8 yeah, yeah. I mean, like why is this, I, I, I was thinking the same thing <laughs> i don't get it like I why, why is this so i don't get it i have why no is this idea such a bad move Rook c1 push, rook takes push, takes, no, no, that wouldn't work. So 
Rixie one push takes. Because this yeah, is the I'm just trying to think. Rook, rook one, one, one like you, you, you start, what's the pu- one? You start pushing. But apparently, it doesn't work. Rook takes. Do I no? Rook takes. I push d two. You can't tell me that works. That actually works. No, no. Yeah, d two. D two. Okay, it wins. Okay. So queen takes. Not that clear path. No, queen takes takes d two. You lose. Like I don't no, understand. No, you, you take the, you take the thing again. So either the computer is arguing that it can maybe white also has a pass pawn of their own, right? Yeah. So maybe you can also just go back to D1. That's crazy. Tempt the, there. tempt the pawn forward. Yeah. And then maybe you've got ideas of going E6, but this doesn't feel like it's mm. that oh. much for white. Maybe, maybe the queen can come to E3 and then white has their own assets with E6. I'm kind of curious. Um, I'm sorry. I, uh, it's very rare that I don't trust the computer. Yeah. But here I'm just thinking, what what is the issue? Okay, okay, okay. First up, the evaluation bar was having mm-hmm. fun with us. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it was just simply having uh, fun with us. Root to d8, it's saying queen to b3. It's okay, the best then, move. Drive right. the king into the corner and then go e6. So what is That's saying? crazy. E6. I think That's the best. Wow. And the rook to c8 move after rook to d8. Rook to c1, sorry, uh, it says, yeah, d3 and only a small minuscule, minuscule edge for white. So that's, wow. this is where the evaluation bar wasn't quite being so accurate with, with us. Rook to d1, and then here you just go a5 or you go h6, whatever happens, and it's a very, yeah. very balanced game. But, yeah, bishop... And after bishop takes f3, rook takes f3, and it is actually suggesting that the best move is to trade off rooks by going rook takes f3, queen takes f3, and now here it likes queen to c2. Again, another Ooh, move that's, that's very spicy. much based on your logic. See that. This is the asset, this pawn on d4, it should be pushed. But how are you going to handle e6? I'm going to mm, turn that That is the strong move. Whoa. Yeah, okay. this maybe is I go eight. eight. Rook F eight. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. buddy. E seven? I'm getting crafty here. But I guess E seven is just Yeah, but you just take you just All right. It helps them out. Take yeah. it, right? Get rid of the e pawn. Yeah, you just take the queen and then just come back. Get rid of it and then come back. That's it. And you've lost a pawn. Okay, thanks, well, Black bro. has lost a pawn in the process. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, so no good there. No good. Yeah, you had to go like h6 or something like that. Yeah, queen c2 was a nice move. That was very nice. Very spicy there. And it's always good to see what happens in time controls when time gets slow. Okay, we have a move. Rook takes f4. Queen takes play instantly. Nice from the ladies. Rook takes, queen takes. Rook takes was a tempo okay. too as well. So it's good to always do things with tempo. Now on Humpy. Now, oh yeah, definitely. And queen c2, the best move according to the engine mobilizing the queen but that takes guts because you do move your queen away <laughs> from the king i also really like your rook to d8 move i think that that's on a practical level very very strong as well yeah the problem here is there's so many moves right and that's what oh here you go queen c2, queen c2. <laughs> flex real hard from humpy queen c2 <laughs> and walk away. look at her stand up bro she's so subtle too as well and just very calm but that was a subtle flex. Queen C2, stand up instantly. I didn't even look at the board. I know I'm good. Queen C2, yep. very nice. Okay. So do you think Anna will bail out with Queen to B3? Or do you think she will put her rook on E1 and say, anything that you can do, I'm going to do, do it as better. well? Okay. Exactly. So, rook, no, you can't. Yeah, okay. Yes. No, you can't. Yes, I can. All right, so rookie one. Okay, so if, uh, if, rook, uh, if rook f8. Okay, okay, rook f8. That's a this great. Is, this is actually. scary stuff, right? Ooh, okay, queen g3, push, push, push. No, I'm losing. Wow, okay. Queen g3, I was push. thinking queen e2. Yeah, but then I was like, okay, queen now I have two. to trade. I probably should have created b3, but maybe, yeah, this seems like, uh, my, I'm probably shaking hands. Takes, yeah, takes, it doesn't feel like there's much in it. Takes, yeah, I don't takes. really like this, yeah. And then g3 f4 my idea if i'm able to is g3 f4 rook c uh rook c2 rook and c2. just bully the pawns yeah and get the king to e4 and then come up 
get the come up with the king yeah to yeah, either d3 or e4 yeah yeah then then you'll be but how does black fight against this yes right I was these pawns the are quite uh, again i have to stop being british about it these pawns are quite bad no <laughs> that, that means really bad <laughs> this is like the worst pawn structure there is in an end game all three yeah. pawns are weak so i don't think the rick and pawn ending is going to be entirely comfortable for humpy Mm, yeah, I think because of the idea of g3, f4, king g2, king f3, king e4, right? Rook c2 as well with rook takes c6 and stuff like that. So, right. Right. yeah, yeah, because you're right. If if Humpy doesn't do anything, then okay, it's so easy plan for white. Ricky, but you one. have a g5 Rick... coming, yeah, Ricky one, okay, Ricky one, okay, so doesn't have to be played. We can play d3. Oh no, what about east? Is it e6? e6 is scared, but it's no mate. Okay, so if we go e6, d2, check. e6, d2, check. King h8. No. Uh, maybe just rook d. Wait, how is this winning? Oh, okay. I'm about to say yeah, this is losing. So maybe rook d1 then instead of that. Yeah, you can go this. And uh, two queens are always better than one. So instead of d2 we have to go rook to d1 okay rook d now now one. yeah that's good and that and now another move is going to be not queen to g3 no, i have my hand on my queen queen e2 queen e2 followed by e7 i like e7 but then queen b3 takes takes okay I think it's still draw. Like I don't have anything. But white okay. white's winning now? How is white winning this? E seven this is coming. Rookie eight, E seven, and then Okay, take. so rookie eight. This right. this oh, is queen of seven. Queen of seven. That's easy. Queen of seven. Queen of seven and uh, the rook falls. Okay, so I go H six and deal with everything. H six. H six and then here it was Queen E two. This is just winning apparently. Wow. Rook takes, and if you go rook to d8, e I've got where is e7? e7. Oh, didn't rook e8? Didn't rook e8? And if no, yeah, if you go rook e8, the pawn on d2 is hanging, so now I'm just going to take it. Queen c1. I was actually thinking rook d8, e7, rook e8, and then here. And yeah. I guess if you go rook takes e6, oh, this is no, there's rook, rook to d8, and this rook is going to be falling, or maybe. No, this queen takes e6 check yes, check, yeah. a6 <laughs> yeah that's a problem that's a problem that's a problem okay let's go back go back okay back, back. okay Maybe so go so this was this was just simply going hmm. rook to e1 maybe you maybe you just have to play very Calmly with h6. No. That's tough. That's tough. That loses. Wow. Maybe just e6, d3, push, push. Yeah, I e6. would win. Okay. I would win. I'm also throwing queen yeah. f7. Mm. Yeah, I'm throwing queen f7. Okay. Maybe, maybe what needs to be done is something like. But it just goes to show that's actually going to be very difficult for humpy to handle this position because everything i've come up with is just losing and that says a lot right how difficult is a position yeah. to hold like that you know as a human you know and time gets lower we are at move what 21 here we got 20 moves before we get increment um so this is this is a, a task it's and what was wrong with rook f8 rook f8 okay let me get frisky here queen to g3 push, push no that wouldn't work okay queen g3 I thought and then D3. E, D3, correct. Oh, no, no, we were, no, we were looking at queen to E2, right? We were, this was, this was the issue, right? right? Yeah, queen E2, queen E2 it, and okay. there's Rick and Pawn ending. And right. Humpy should maybe be okay, but this pawn structure makes it unpleasant. Mm, correct. Uh, but also the, the D pawn is like wildly rampant. There's things going on with that. The A pawn we could use mm -hmm. maybe as a decoy. B pawn could be. There's just like both ways. Okay, you have. I have some bad pawns, but black as well. If you go get mine, I'm trying to get yours. It's really a back and forth 
thing where it may even come down to like one tempo. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to check the engine and the engine is telling me that after queen c2, queen c2, the best move is rook e1 is good. Rook f1 is good as well. But yeah, and we are spot on with our analysis that after rook f8, queen e2 is in fact the best try for white. And white has a small advantage here mm. on account of this vulnerable pawn structure. But um, let's get back to the bird's eye view because I'm taking a quick glance at the other games and things are looking interesting in the game between Gary Ashkina and Tan Zhong Yi. Because uh, Tan Zhong Yi, she, she's played a4, if you take a look. Ooh, so she. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, how do, where do we leave off here? So we left it off with the rook being on b2. What? Yeah, we left it off here with the rook coming to b2, and then the rook came to d1 attacking. And I thought that after here, that Garyashkina might just uh, accept a draw. rook to b1, rook to d1. But no, rook b1, king came to g2, and now a4 on the board. And now this knight comes to e4. Once the rook comes to e2, f5 anchoring this knight to e4 and uh now after a5 rook b2 are we in for a race that is a question that we have to answer now and we can so let's see all right rook takes no um first off my first choice is what do i have to do i have to take this apparently i don't actually have a choice wow okay but then that leaves the pawn. You can, go, no, you can go. No, you can't go knight to g8, g1. Yeah, rook you want, rook to knight. you want. Yeah. And so I have to take it. And then push. Rook takes, king g1. Rook takes. Wow. Oh, wait. Takes, takes. Let's take a look at this. Takes, takes. What do I do? Takes. Wow. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, conf I'm confused. If I push, you take both the pawns, right? So a6, you take on f2. I move the king. You take on a2 as well. And you get both the pawns out of nowhere, believe it or not. Is h4 an idea? Check, king there, rook takes, push. It's not enough. No. 95, rook takes, go takes push. You want to go h4? My idea, yeah, my idea. Oh, well, here it loses. Two. Yeah, here, it loses here. But my idea is, like, get the knight yeah. to e5, h4, h5, knight g6. The usual, like the usual mate with the three. So h4, h5. So somehow, rook takes, takes, maybe 95. Rook f2, king g1, rook a2, h4. I, rook, rook takes, five, knight five. e5. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be wrong, though. Rook F2, rook King takes G1. F2. Yeah, correct. And then Rook A2 and then H4. Yeah. H4. Uh, uh, H4. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, I was... I got my... Yeah. I got my... Yeah, but it's wrong here. It's wrong. Maybe just even Knight takes G3. Maybe it's yeah, Knight because you can, go rook takes, you can go Rook takes A5 and after And Rook A6 too as well. Knight, knight A6. takes G3. Yikes! Yeah, you just lose all the pawns. It was literally all the pawns. Yeah. So, but so when we got that. when we got here, it wasn't h four. So rook a two was apparently okay. I mean, h oh, four wasn't, but after ninety five, rook a two. Um, okay, nice... hang on, hang on. I got an I got an idea. It's yeah. really weird. It's quite no, but it, it's just being flashed for the sake of being flashed. I was thinking of rook to d one, but that doesn't work. On account Ooh. of rook takes e2, rook takes b1, rook takes f2. It um, takes like everything. Taking yes. everything. Like hungry yeah. hippos. Okay, so so rook to b2. I was going to say. Okay, so a5, rook to b2. Okay, okay. All right, you got to really think here. This is a thinker. This is so critical. I mean, this is the most critical part of the game right here is the figuring out the sequence okay so one thing at a time you have to take on b2 okay you don't actually have a choice okay, so take take what happens now if you want you know what no, i was actually thinking what about a4 f2. a4 yeah hmm? take, oh that's losing whoa how no, is that knight losing? takes f2 losing oh maybe rookie uh, two rook yeah rookie two is too far away Wins. what about a4 instead of king g2 just Would go guys... oh that's oh, a6 sorry. the other the other one yeah oh, but what oh, that didn't but hang on that. a second after, yeah. after <laughs> okay, a6, yeah, we can go you can go a6 and then takes the and then king goes, let's go king gg1 let's not 
get the king in and mating that because after rook takes f3 we have got a7 mm -hmm. and the pawn cannot be caught Beautiful. so that that's really nice rook takes a2 is the reason i wasn't that keen on this but you can give rick to h a a that's kind of annoying and then what happens if black goes c4 and now your idea of going knight to e5 and we're just going to end up trading the pawns oh off. c3 oh. c3 c3 is, is scary is <laughs> exactly hold on right hold on <laughs> yeah. what is going hold on hold on to right? this no no this is Whoa. this is not what we want to do oh man what about a4 instead of okay a4? we have a move we have a move we oh, have we a move got... oh, we, yeah we got we so got a move knight, knight d2. d2 wow that one knight d2 nice one that one is interesting it just pins but apparently there's nothing that they can do about it rook d1 well she can go oh she can go that's rook crazy a2. Rook d1 is like a cross super pin this is a mistake yeah. No, it's, it's, look at the way that the evaluation bar creeps creeps up, because I was banking on after knight takes a mistake. Rook takes rook takes e two. But apparently, there's so much calculating. Maybe you can go a six. <laughs> that's a that's sick. A six is just ridiculous. That's a great move. Wow, a six. No, no, oh, no, it doesn't no, work. No. It's like this, this work. is crazy. This is dank, bro. This is too dank. Okay, white to move. What do we play? Rookie four. No, it doesn't work. Uh, Rick it's takes knight. Rick takes knight. Oh, it does work, apparently. Rook d2? Yeah, but right. I thought, oh, take, take it and get behind the pawn. I don't understand. Because it seems like he's still good, or she's still good. Rook d2, Rook d2, and then takes, and Rook a, Rook b8, push. Yeah, I guess I'm fine. Takes, and you get behind yeah. the pawn, and then Rook b8, and yeah. push, push, and get the king up. And how is this winning? How is this? This is crazy. <laughs> like, it feels like this is a draw. I guess the king, but it feels like the king is fast enough. The king gets to f5, e5, yeah. and d5. So also, maybe you can go f6, and the king is mega quick to snap up the pawn on c5. F3 takes. takes. Wow. Yeah, that's that's dang. So, that's that's crazy. Okay, so so yeah, so if black in this position goes, yeah, I was like, king, exactly. King, king, well, no, we okay. Push rook b8 has to you be played. You get rook b8, a7, a7 push. Rate there and now, now the king is getting across like i don't understand how is this completely winning like this, this is crazy this is really hmm. a a, a study i mean I'm, I'm learning something here like this is i study a lot of in games dev Resky in game emmanuel is my favorite right but this is wow this is crazy so how do we win how do we win f4 guess maybe king f1 king f1 king f5 then we just come up um great question what if i just head for the heels myself like is this something against king g4 uh, my goal is to just take your pawns and queen my others three oh but you because have you can't get the... oh my goodness and you I can't even get the h pawn with f4 happening you can't you oh. can't get it yeah, yeah. okay so and so you'd have to go this king way five. but then yeah. we just wait king d and I'm doing the same. I'm shuffling back and forth. A little dance party. I mean, this is crazy. Like, how do you win is insane to me. Rook check. Ah, no, yeah. no, that doesn't work. Rook a6, maybe? No, that doesn't. I don't understand. Well, we have a move. We have a move. Not rotates a, a2. But instead, uh, Tan, she is sophisticated. She's rook going a1. rook a1 with a plan of rook 1 takes a2. Yeah, like it also gets the rook out of pre from knight b1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like her chances because she, remember, we was talking about clock too as well. Well, she got nine moves for time control. So, you know, that is still some time. Anything can happen in nine moves here, especially when you're a long time. You can see how her shoulders are up. She's very tense. She's very tense. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Very tense, Alexandria. Yeah. So you can tell. I mean, it's obviously like you would be tense too as well. 10 minutes on the clock in this type of position, you have to be precise. You try to control your nerves as much as you can. Um, Ten minutes here on the clock to make nine moves before we get increment. And I, I don't. Even, they don't get extra time. They only get increment, right? They uh, they get extra time. Once they do they get extra time. 40. They 40. get the thirty minutes. Thirty. Okay, thirty and, 30 and then thirty second increment. Oh, I see mm -hmm. there. Time is showing up. Thirty minutes added. Almost forty one. Okay, thirty second already bonus. Perfect. 
Sweet. Yeah. Well, the question is how to handle this is F. Do you go F3? Yeah, that would be a nice move. No. I would snap. Look, look, look. Winning for black. Winning for black, bro. Okay, nice C3 probably. Nice C3 is a nice move. Yeah, and then not to uh, break easy. Knight D1 first, maybe. Knight D1. Uh, but there is, uh, yeah, Rook E1. That's a crazy little tactic, yeah. So I don't know, what yeah. do you do here? <laughs> yeah, what is the move? Knight B1? <laughs> oh my goodness, Knight B1. Ah, Knight B1. That's disgusting. This is a family channel, bro. Oh. Knight B1 is nasty. Oh my goodness. That's beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> the, it looks like the most passive set of pieces. <laughs> and yet, beautifully corner. placed because they're targeting the port, the knight on D2. Yeah. My goodness. Okay, so what is the saving move then? Uh, that's a great question. And she has nine minutes to figure it out. So that is not going to be easy. That is not going to be easy at all. Okay. Yeah, because if... No, no, no. Let me think about this one. H4, again, this idea of H4 just doesn't work, huh? G4, look at that. That was a fancy move. That, that, was, that was me. I like me that. About... Yeah, I but like G4 that. isn't, you just go like this. Yeah, that's um, it just looks good, huh? A pawn for a knight, not yeah, going to be sufficient. Uh, hang on, okay, okay, I'm going to cheat because this yeah, definitely, is definitely. the same. Okay, what do we got? Right. What are we looking at? Okay. We'll see. We'll see uh, this is a, this is a beautiful move. A three. <laughs> a three. Save. All right, bro. No. Look at this. A four will okay. also save the game. Oh, okay, okay. Anything nice. else? A six is also a draw. A four. A four wow. on the board. She plays the only move. And you know what the idea of this is? Is the a six pawn. So yeah. you're really dealing with that. So you can have the little knight. You can go rook a2. I go a6 with a7 being a threat. Wow. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's interesting because I thought that this type of move wasn't possible because after rook takes a4, what is the big idea? Uh. Mm. Ah. Knight takes e4 and knight c3. Woo! Heat! You better be doing your tactics, oh. boy. You better be doing your tactics. Wow. This is amazing stuff. Okay, but th this is just going to be a draw, but <laughs> what a way to get <laughs> to an equal position. To have to find A4. It's incredible. Okay. And whilst the Tan Zhong Yi is thinking about what to do next, we are going to go on a short break, but you don't want to miss all the action that is coming your way in just a few minutes. Has this ever happened to you? Oh shoot, another mouse slip. What about this? Oh, well holy bishops on passant. I think I'm getting carpal tunnel. If only there was a way to play online chess with a real life board. What if I told you, you can with Chess Up 2. That's right, with Chess Up 2, you can now play over the board online. Wow. Simply connect your Chess.com account to our state-of-the-art Chess Up 2 and get a game started. Every time you move, our revolutionary board will transmit the data online directly to your opponent. And as soon as they move, squares will light up, signifying which piece is going where. Well shucks, this Hikaru guy seems pretty good. With Chess Up 2, mm. mouse slips and sore wrists mm. are a thing of the past. My carpal tunnel is gone. Well this sure is fun. I'm playing online against my new friend, Hikaru. Who needs a family? But I sure do miss clicking on a piece and seeing all of my available moves like they have on chess.com. Well, Danny, you're in luck. This feature is totally available on the Chess Up 2 as well. Wow, well, I'm convinced. But hey, what if I don't just want to play an opponent online? What if I want to use one of chess.com's other great tools? I thought you'd never ask. With Chess Up 2, you can fully take advantage of the Chess.com integration by playing bots, analyzing your offline games, and even using our optional AI assistance to visualize the quality of moves with color-coded hints. Well, holy f Chess Up, you did it. 
You made IRL chess cool again. You got it, Danny. And how do you know my name? Play chess today on the board of tomorrow. This April, intergenerational rivalries spill over to the chessboard. Face off against the boomers. Grapple with Gen X and the millennials. Or take on the young guns of Gen Z, Gen Alpha, and Gen Beta. And then the mighty Martin? Play them all on chess.com. We are back and we are ready for all those potential time scrambles that are going to be coming our way over the next hour. And Kanti, well, we left you on a cliffhanger, didn't we? Because Goryashkina was playing some amazing moves, but she does look like she has secured or neutralized Tan's position. But going back to the bird's eye view, which game takes your fancy? Because it seems like our prediction game was pretty much on point. And I see the big developments happening in the game between Lagno and Salimova. Maybe we yeah, had that. We haven't paid attention to what's happening. Yeah, let's see what's going on so, in that game. Let's uh, bring up the board and have a look. And here you can uh, see that there have been a few developments. Okay, yeah. I... There you go. Mm -hmm. And what do we think about this position? So Salimova still pawn down. 
move the pawn to f5 was happening. How is this endgame as well? If you were to make that trade, Rick takes knight, would you touch it? Mm, I think the problem is the queen side majority. A lot of times in um, in games, even like even from a static position out of the opening, you can always remember. You can always remember that you know from the queen side majority, you can immediately oh I can go to an in game. In fact, even a Jobaba London with three c five. Actually, there's a game I first won OTB from an IM. I actually beat him in just a position that I understood that you need to use the three pawns on the side of the board. The queen side majority is always the greatest. So with that being said, I'm not taking rook d2 at all. Takes, takes. Okay, maybe it's holdable. Bishop takes, king takes, rook f5, rook d6, rook b5 maybe. Right? We went on this line. And then rook b5, b3, rook c5, c4. Right? So we have this situation looks... where, you know, white's just better. It's got the pawns. Yeah. And it looks really scary because we know that two pawns by themselves will be able to win the game. Whereas two versus one don't really necessarily make that much of an impact. So I definitely agree with you. I don't think we're going to be seeing rook takes knight. So this leaves Salimova with the unpleasant choice of just moving the rook away. Yeah, Perhaps to f6. Is she going to go rook to g5? You know, you have to keep an eye on d6. So rook f6. No, Rook F6, I would go 93, 93. Yeah. Uh, and the knight is protecting this pawn on F5, and all white needs to do is go Rook to D2 and pile on the pressure against D6. Oh, Salimova is in big, big trouble here. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, was, that already started when she was down that pawn. When you get down mm -hmm. a pawn, and then you just start going, you're like, that sucks, because, like, from a player standpoint, you're down a pawn. Then you're like, well, number one, can I get the pawn back? Then you realize, okay, that's probably not happening. So now you're like playing for a draw. That is the worst place to be in chess history. In fact, it just sucks because you're like, now you know I'm not winning and hoping for a blunder, which is hard. I mean, at this level, come on, right? And also, it's it's just difficult. You're playing down a pawn. You're trying to hold and get your chances, but you got to lock in and do it. So it is what it is. She has to try to lock in and take any advantage that she can with 13 minutes left. And we got 20 minutes or not 20, more like 16, 17 moves or so before we, we, we hit a uh, time control. You get yeah. that extra time, having 12 minutes. So, I mean, it's really, she's really under a big gun here. To totally. And the thing is, though, if she's not taking on G2, if that end game, let's just go into that end game one more time, just to confirm it is completely or oh, very, very, very difficult. So Rook takes. Mm -hmm. So she does have the option to go Rook to F6, but then White will just simply come up Rook to D5 right. and the pawn on A5 is going to be lost. So, so let's go Rook, sorry, Rook takes F5. Rook takes d6. And okay, she's decided that this end game is a no go area. And I completely agree with that because she went the other way. Three versus one, it's going to be a win with two pawns. You can make a lot of progress. So she went rook to h6. Okay, rook h6. And so now your move 93. was very attractive. Knight to e3. Mm -hmm. defend this pawn f5 and then you can get on with the job of going rook to d3 harass this pawn on a5 how can salimova just mix this up we're in kind of like concrete move territory and i'm not seeing that much knight to e3 rook h3 is that a possibility is rook to e8 yeah i mean lagno's in the driver's seat she's trying to knock out and win her second game in a row which is going to be big for the standings so if she's able to convert here, but it is definitely uh, hard for Salomonova here. Uh, I don't actually know where we can even have chances. We have to try to improve our position. Like, I guess that's like easier said than done, but like even waiting move, H4, A4, and I might even make the pawn even weaker than what it is. King H8, that's a gross. I'm not even trying to do that. Like King H8 is just not a move I even want to do. Rook E8, maybe? Maybe I'll try there. Maybe I'll start with Rook E8 just okay. to hit the knight. See what happens. Okay. So I, I, I kind of like this move, Rook E8. At least you activate your knight, your Rook rather. Um, okay, let's put the, put the Rook on D3. If now Rook H3. Is happening. Now Rook H3. Yeah, now Rook H3. And now we got some activity. I, 
yeah and this is gonna be not so good because of the bishop ace a6 that is a pin so that that's okay. that's one way one nice way of piling on the pressure so what next knight comes to there's no problems with a rook coming to the g-line just yet so let's go knight c4 Mm, that's a good move. It is attacking A and D. Okay, we have a and move. We have a move. Way. We have moves. So what was played? Rook to D4, centralizing the rook. Oh. Put it in the center of the board, you know, put some pressure on her clock too as well. But did you I see mean, like, the, yeah, the evaluation bar went down? It did jump a little bit. And I wonder why I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Bishop takes King takes I'm good. Rook is three. It doesn't make any sense. Rook F6, 93, okay. G6 is there, though. Oh, that might be something. G6, let's try G6. Uh, G6 well, actually, no. uh, G6 after Rook F6 first. Ah, uh, okay, so Rook F6. Double first. Rook F6 first, uh -huh. then And then after Knight to E3, and then, then G6. G6. Now, I, yeah. I understand wow. your point, but what about... Well. Oh, Knight G4, knight oh G4. my goodness. And Knight H6 check, yikes. Yeah, so Oof, Rook takes man. a 5, Knight to H6 check. Really bad for, for Black. Yeah, yeah. So why did the engine jump? What is the, what is it, what did he even? So Rook F6. They don't have anything. And then, then. Knight to H6. And then here. Oh, and Rook E8, maybe, back again. Maybe just this. Maybe just no. But still, you've got Knight to D5, and you can't take the pawn on F5. Knight you take it, knight to e7, check, wins the day. So you don't want that. Mm -hmm. Consequences is the... Maybe you don't have to do anything. Maybe you just get h5. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, yeah, to secure, done. just to secure the g4 square. And then you <laughs> That's so hard to play. Especially you sit here, all you're down a pawn, and you're like, ah, oh, h5, let's just... All this activity, so many moves to make. That's so funny. But it's right, though. It makes sense. Yeah. It, it wasn't quite enough, though. Okay, maybe now this. Hang on a second. Let's 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 play forcing moves all the time. I'm with let's you. keep on generating the play. And, 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 point. So, finally understood it. So, the knight comes to g4. This rook will come down to e1. Okay. And you can't step up with your king. Got a block. You got a block, and then... Snap, snap. Yeah. And then rook picks. And the pawn on f5 will fall. Thank you. And I have no problem playing this one out now. Exactly. So rook to d4. Rook to d4 may be an accuracy because not to g6, but in to, to do with rook to f6 attacking this pawn on f5. A lot and to do. Lot to think about. Ten minutes too. Yeah. This is gonna get a blitz game very soon. Totally. Like my favorite part of the of the of the tournament or every game is like when they get to this time control, when it's really low on time to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Ricky eight played instead, just uh, cutting off this knight from the access to e three. That's also a really nice move. Yeah, it does. It does restrict. Mm hmm. So, what about this? Oh. Rook to d2. I want to go for the d6 pawn. That's pretty good. It does attack. What can I do about that? Um, I can try rook f8 or rook f6. And then, yeah, maybe rook f6. And then you take, I take. Same, same. And then takes. And I take. Rook takes f5. Boom, boom. And cool, bro. You know, I feel like I got some initiative. Uh, but wait one second. But remember, you don't want three versus that's, one. But there is, bro. there is this. There is this. Takes, takes. Ah, oh, Bishop G. King takes rook check. Wow. Rook E2. And you what take on C2. And this one is going to be a draw because a combo. if you have two versus one or three versus two, it the chances for a draw is much higher than three versus one, which is like nine times out of 10, a win for the person with the pawn majority. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nice, nice stuff there from Sunny Mova. Rook E8, 
So you can't line up and uh, win against the D6 pawn. So what can you do? It's a good question. Okay, Rick D6 takes, takes, dang, that was a good, that was a good combo. Well, maybe you could go there and then don't take. So you just better to position the rook, but then, okay, F5 is loose too. But yeah, because that was the thing, you know, yeah, hitting F5. F5. Mm -hmm. Four is no good. Maybe I just start pushing the queen side majority. Like, you know what? Hold everything. Hold the glue. C3. And then my goal is to go B4, take and play A4. So C3. C3. Yeah, just C3. Hold everything. You make a move. Yeah, I like it. Like, what does black do? Like, I'm holding everything. C5. Okay. Oh, that's a good move. Okay, maybe B4 anyway. Just go with the plan. Yeah, B4. I, I... The boy's about to roll. Yeah, yeah. Right. so if I go, I see that the evaluation bar is in the middle, but this is on a practical level so difficult to play. Right. Oh, we have because a move. The, like you mentioned, the pawns are going to be rolling. Okay, and instead of rook e eight, rook f to d two. Yeah. Oh, she going, going for it. So we, could see that end game rook to f6 and the rook d6 take 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 check take 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 <laughs> and <laughs> draw and draw okay so just to run through that one again rook f6 and then if rook takes d6 the whole point is you take on d6 and then you take the knight on g2 and then you throw your rook on e2 and then two versus one Yes, white is an extra pawn, but black has good drawing chances because it is not such a massive majority on the queen side. Oh, we'll see whether Salimova finds that one. Rook f6. Is that the only move? Let's go back to the game position and see what is the only chance. So rook f6 is, is the best move. Get this. She can also play rook to e5 with exactly the same idea. So you can oh, also take the time to go king to f8 again <laughs> because after rook takes d6 this knight will be traded off and there will be that check on e2 mm. okay well this is a massive chance for salimova just to neutralize the game by going rook to f6 but let's see whether she plays that we'll have to come back to this one maybe we go back to the bird's eye view and take a look at what's happening in the game between letting jay and veshali yeah that's that's a spicy game and and definitely have both knights or four knights were all in the center now it's only two knights in the center lots of pieces on the board there in the game so a lot of things can happen lots of opportunities as time gets lower you know, the, the friction and the tension gets actually higher with all these pieces on the board. C5 was the last move here. Yeah. And uh, we left it with, uh, we left it in this particular position and we were loving Black's chances after A4. We weren't quite sure where the queen was going to go, but Vaishali didn't play that. She played queen C7 and after A4, that was indeed a one-time offer. Rook AD8, Rook AD1. Knight g6, c4, the knight is being pushed around, and now c5. Interesting. This knight is coming to d6. Mm, that is something. Dang. That's nice because it shuts down that bishop by a lot, but it does open up the other diagonal. So, for instance, oh, that doesn't work. I wanted to go bishop b8. If you go bishop to b8, Maybe let's I just can, show though. the point. Yeah, let's just the knight see what will happens. come to d6. And if you and... go rook takes rook, take, take. queen takes f7. See, there was a beautiful point to this bishop being on f1. In between. Yeah, because there's no check. Ooh, yeah. that's nice. That's so fire. that is lovely, right? So instead of uh, rook takes rook, if you have to go rook f8, then this just feels like man you can i know right you know tactic senses are tingling i definitely looked at knight takes takes bishop there but then there was a knight d5 there okay so it doesn't there's work there's also it's just nasty. bishop c4 pilot on an f7 
Heat. Love this position for white. So c5 with a very nasty idea of going knight to d6, which means you have to do something about it. You have to kind of maybe go bishop e6. And I say that with a oh. Something happened, by the it, way. No, no, yeah. she's she's dropped the knight back to d5. She's oh, uh, she went to d5. Okay. Yeah, this is also awesome. okay. I like this one much better than uh, bishop to e6. Right. That was a bit of a panic reaction from me. So here I have knight b5 is the first thing that comes out to me, but it I guess you can just take and move the bishop. So nothing fancy. Knight b5 looks good, but taking and bishop c6. I mean that's just. This is very good. And are you going to take with the knight? Oh, the, sorry, the rook or the queen? Uh, I was actually going to say with the queen because rook takes was bishop e6. I guess no. I could sack the queen there, though. Bishop c6. Yeah, bishop c6, yeah. and it's just it's disastrous. Yeah. Okay, so you can't quite do that. Do we? But the, it just goes to show how complicated this position is. The aggressive moves are not quite working in white's favor. What about knight to, no, knight to d6? this pawn on c5 is vulnerable um, she actually went bishop there? c4 i think she just went uh, bishop, bishop c4. c4 yeah so she went bishop Excellent. c4 hitting the knight very good but you could sack this pawn in fact so the question is how do we want to do it that's hmm. a great question <laughs> i don't that know is... also bear in mind do you remember when when a pawn is there on h6, it is a hook for a tactical weakness. So I'm just thinking mm. that there are possibilities of bishop takes h6 at the right time, and then you back that up with bishop takes d5 so that yeah. the knight can come to f6. Now, obviously, this is just a pipe dream, but I want to just draw attention to this pattern. Yeah, it's a nice pattern. That's definitely something to pay attention to also. Looks like black has that diagonal with the two with the bishop and the queen. So a7, g1, and b8, h2, those diagonals. We have pressure on them. But what happens if you now. if you go your, you for do? your plan of knight to e5, just give up material? Dang, you just say, take that boy, I guess. Takes, takes. And then do we have anything better? Knight d6 is very tempting. That yeah, knight d6. Clean, That's just clean. Yeah, knight d6 is yeah, just it a is clean. It is very move. nice, isn't it? And then now, now you can go... I'm going to be five, five, right? Exactly. Yeah, and the queen will swing across to g3. Yeah, it, it looks bad. That. Ooh. So, okay, none of this business. What about like is it bishop e6? Yeah, bishop, bishop e6 was instant just grossness. I mean, after knight takes e6, it feels like, or even knight d6 first, then knight e6. I'm feeling, I'm smelling an exchange set from, uh, from black. Cause after, See, I mean, it might be possible. It might have to be possible to exchange. Sack. So what kind of exchange sack? Rook takes knight? Yeah, correct. At some point, uh, knight takes, rook takes d6 if it's available. Cause if bishop e6 and knight d6 happens, then I am going to probably sacrifice for rook d6. At some mm -hmm. point, that knight is just a, a dagger, but maybe you could hold and, and chill and try to break chip away at the c5 pawn. So you don't have to actually sacrifice. That takes some time. Oh, sorry. Whoa, that was... was that on the board? Oh, I was like, Dang. no, that was, that was me. No, no, I, I accidentally put it. Do you know what? The evaluation bar didn't move. It's not much. that bad, right? I was like, Whoa, rookie five was <laughs> solid. Just double the risk. <laughs> Dang. It was it was a mouse slip on my behalf. I, I wasn't paying attention because I I was a pay I was looking at the other the other games and see what developments there have been. And suddenly, Ricky Five got played, and the evaluation bar didn't move. I would love right. so much. Wow. Okay, let me just let me just check one thing because this position is so murky. Okay, right. Oh my goodness me. So the best move is Rick to e seven. So you are on the right track. You know, you, you can just give up the knight. The uh, you can just the pawn okay. rather, and then just go for activity. But the second move was the mouse slip that i came Ricky up with five. Ricky, five. <laughs> Ricky five best move by mouse slip yeah it's pretty good i like this Ricky five because it's really in your face it's like bro bro yeah. hey man chill relax like why are you aggressively rook lifting at me that's uh <laughs> that's exactly what's going on that's an aggressive yeah. rook lift oh this is a very exciting game Leighton J really putting the pressure on Vaishali so Vaishali 
in the box, just thinking how she can handle this. But let's get back to the bird's eye view. Whilst this game is very, very complicated, let's check in with the game between uh, um, Mizichuk and uh, Humpy Canary because what the other is complicated, this is as simple as can be. They might we well have say, hey, uh, we'll get some lunch. Eggs. Is the players yeah. how many moves have they done? 31. 31. So they're not allowed to offer a draw, but they have to find a way to repeat. Rick a6, and there you go. C5. I'm expecting Rick c6 to be played. Yeah, Rick c6, take, take, and then shuffle the rooks back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe she can even get to the draw very quickly with moves like rook c6 and then rook c8 and then just keep offering oh check 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 the repetition right, right? Yeah, right so you want yeah she's going for rook c6 okay so i'm there expecting after rook takes a2 that instead of taking the pawn she might just go rook c8 check no she takes the pawn yeah and this is what i looking too h6 we almost have symmetry at least with the pawns king h2 maybe king h7 can be played okay a rig a3 this is as equal as it gets and uh rig to b5 played ah uh, here it comes canty king we'll f7 check into rig b7 check and now humpy goes up to c6 rick b6 there it King is guys f7 and here is the draw and now you have to claim correctly now the players are just going to keep on repeating until they can offer a draw and there that's it They've repeated many times, they've made their eye contact, and it is our very first result, a draw between Anna Muzichuk and Humpy Kunaru. What an exciting game. So we left it with all sorts of things happening, but in the end, it just looked like it fizzled out very accurately played by the players. Should we quickly just retrace our footsteps there or should we just come back to it once the time trouble is over which one the game between uh um Mizichuk and humpy oh just, just see how it. yeah we can make it oh you can we, we can, can go let's through move it quickly on. yeah we can go through it quickly if, if we, we uh, can go very quickly we time? Because, uh, yeah we have some time okay we have some yeah just very very quickly so Sweet. we left it with uh e6 we left it in this particular position rick f8 right. Queen b3, and this is the moment where just the situation just clarified. Rook takes e6, rook a4, and uh, here you see it is a drawn rook and pawn ending. So, yeah, very well played by both game, both players. Very accurate indeed. So let's go back to the live board and have a look at what's happening. Where do you want to go to, Kanti? Maybe we check in Ooh. on the game between... Uh, Garyashkina and uh, Tanjong Yi. Yeah, let's go over there. Absolutely. And then we'll go to the Lagno game too as well. Look like yeah. some king, some king safety issues, both parties. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, so, so let's head there and we can already see from the bird's eye view, count the pawns that uh, Garyashkina, she is a pawn down, but the pawn on F5 is on freeze and c5 so temporary yeah. on sack, and on the side. rook is under attack on uh, b2 so let's not forget that nice. and in terms of clock time well gary Ashkina, she has just under just over four and a half minutes plenty of time plenty of time especially with 30 second um, increment you're getting and it's a mm -hmm. it's a position where i mean you're not going to mess it up so chat says yeah. vishali at one minute on move 27 we got to go over okay there we got to go there okay so this one's looking very level but yeah definitely let's head to leiting j and vashali let's take a look at this position the bar. oh my oh goodness my the bar. goodness let's what go back happened a few. here 
what happened here? So we left it with decision time, knight to d5, bishop c4, bishop c8 played. And this is not a great move on account of bishop takes d5. I guess rook takes d5 is not possible because of knight to f6 check. So that was really unfortunate. So c takes d5, knight to b5, attacking the queen and the bishop, queen to b8. And here, well, there is an amazing resource, Canty. Okay, hold on. Let me hit. Let me give me hit my tactics book. Hold on, tactics first. There is. This. Hold on. Hold it's on. Let me just. Look. Let me rook. Let me rook. What is this? It's just sick. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want a absolutely sick tactical resource. Uh, we got to show it because uh, I'm not sure whether Rook D five or what will even be on her. Rook D five is natural and is good, but she can also go Queen takes D five. I saw Queen D five, but that don't really. How does this work? Knight F six takes. Uh, what? This don't make sense. And the jacket is off, and the whole point is that the knight comes to F six. Oh, you get both. G roots. takes F six. Rook takes E eight. And look at this. The queen came in. These move. pieces are oh all my caged in. And now rook takes d5. And the queen yeah. has no squares. When have you ever Wait. stalemated a queen in your life? That is crazy. Yeah, and not only that, but this rook might be coming over to h5 in order to do some business. But this rook is also going to come to d8. Yo. Look at this construction. They have no purpose in life. Queen takes d5. Yeah, Can Nathan J override that instinct to go rook takes d5? You know, and queen d5 happens. The spectacular queen you know, takes d5. That is just crazy. Have you ever been in a situation, LTB, where you felt like you wanted to actually like flip the board? Like literally just flip it and like, you know, get out of there. I think if that happens, it would, you that might cross her mind. I've been there in many tournaments where I was like, I, should I flip it? No, that's not the right idea. Like, I shouldn't do that. And then you talk yourself out of literally knocking all the pieces over. Because queen d5 would be a move where you you would feel that. That's a nasty well, move. The jacket came off. <laughs> I think, I think in, maybe <laughs> it's in your radar, right? Queen takes d5. You locked in. We, <laughs> man. What a moment. In. But the thing is, though, rook takes d5 is sufficient, right? You're going to win a pawn. You're going to have the better yeah, position. Right. Yeah, and you know that after rook takes d5, it's good enough because bishop to e6 is simply going to be met by rook takes rook. Everything is good in life. And you got full chances to press for the win here. But, but, but... <laughs> Look for something better, and that is Boom, Queen, queen D5. That's a soccer man. I just want to see it happen because, like, wow, mm -hmm. man, that's a crazy tactic, bro. Yeah, that is a crazy tactic. I cannot. Oh, hopefully, we get to see this, guys. Now, uh, Lei Tang, she, she's a very tactical player. She won with that King's Indian too, as well. Shout out to the KID officiatos out there. Yeah, yeah, I, I am one too, as well. Shout out to you guys. We love some King's mm -hmm. Indian, so. She did win with King's Indian, so that'd be nice to see. You know, uh, Queen takes d5 is definitely up her alley here, but it's a very hard move to spot. Very hard move to spot due to the calculations afterwards. Sorry. But also, just to get there, right? Because, mm. like, often when you play chess, you have certain moves that are just not on your radar because we've, through experience, just filtered them out. And Queen takes d5 is one of them, especially because you can go rook takes d5 and have that winning position. It's just that queen takes d5 is a killer move. Man, it's beautiful. It's crushing. I mean, wow. And I looked at it briefly, but then just, this is the hard part about chess too. When you look at a position like that, or you see a move, and then you're like, oh yeah, you know, but then you just stop calculating. And they say, you know, keep calculating, but then, how you know, you keep calculating until you can't anymore. That's really the general sense consensus of it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to train that sometimes though, because you have to keep calculating. Queen d5, you can see. Rook d5 and a knight f6, you can see a few of those moves. But then clearly seeing it at the end and understanding that this is the way to go is, is the harder part, obviously. Yeah, you have to understand that after knight f6, otherwise you've just given up your queen. But not that much. The whole point is that after pawn takes knight, rook takes e8, king h7, the rook will come down to 
Oh, she what somehow. What she do? What she do? Oh, she took Night Takes oh. Ace. Oh, come on! Oh no! Night Takes Ace. Ah. No, but this was not the best move. No. In oh, fact, Rick Takes D five. Yeah. Rick Takes D five was the only other winning move. Knight Takes A seven would spoil the win because after Queen Takes Knight, Queen Takes Knight, Rick Takes D five can be met by Bishop to E six. Rook d8? Oh, you, I guess. I mean, okay, but the game, but the game, but the game. I mean, I'm, I'm fine. Rook takes, takes, rook takes, king, h7. I mean, Hikaru is literally having a game like that right now. I don't know if they finished the game yet. Uh, yeah. And uh, oh, they drew. Yeah, they this drew that one, game. Yeah. This one, you can yeah. see, black is a lot more active. Right. This one is not so easy for Leighton J, but she's going for it. Rook takes d5, and Vaishali just over one minute and a half, and she's on move 30. Bishop yeah, that's e6 tough. Ooh, 11 is moves. the only move. Anything else will lose. lose. Right. Is this live? She's going to be a pawn down. Oh, she played Rook d5. Hmm? Okay. Yes, she did. She played it. Wow. So we might be going down this line. Yeah, I mean, of course, I'm not going to let you have the exchange for free. So Rook takes d8, takes, takes, and we going down that line. I sacked the queen, yeah. but the wrong, <laughs> not the best way of sacking the queen. Yeah, Bishop e6, Vaishali, she can breathe a huge sigh of relief because she has a superior version of this very imbalanced endgame. So, oh, oh, she didn't take the queen. Wow. She and was just well, like that, and I just like that, Vaishali dang. puts a foot wrong. She had to just take the queen and just accept two rooks against the queen and then this queen would be coming out and now there's been a turn around and now Leighton J she is winning no but I understand practically from Vishali's standpoint for number one my time number two is if you reach that position I mean I got two rooks and a very active knight but I can't get in yet and it's hard to actually see that you can't get in yet in the time that she had so it's practical I do understand she didn't have to she didn't take the queen because the two rooks, I mean, you, you have to be active. I get some pros and cons to both. White's pieces are quite active. The rooks will be connected. You get a bishop to c3, a knight on d6 at some point. Bishop moves, you have knight f7. There's all kind of crazy stuff. And it's, you don't have enough time to figure all that out. So that does make yeah. sense. Rook takes d8. Yeah. yeah. Rook takes d8. I, I agree. It wasn't an easy decision to make. But... Well, it was a tough one, but uh, let's go back to the bird's eye view and take a look at the other games. And as you can see, we are going towards some peaceful results. Let's uh, maybe check in on the game between uh, Lagno and uh, Salimova. And there, after a whole load of moves, when we left it, Salimova was defending very, very nicely. And as you can see here, the players are in a rook and pawn endgame. Salimova is about to win the e6 pawn. And with it, there disappears all of Lagno's winning chances. I'm so, all I'm saying is Sal 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 Salimova is, uh, she's playing excellent. She's playing excellent chess. This is going to be points on the board for her. A draw is a great result, especially against uh, someone as strong as Katarina Lagno here. She is playing awesome chess, I think. So yeah. she was able to survive this. She survived a difficult ending. And uh, we, we, we caught some moments of it where she activated her rooks. She dominated Lagno's knight and found some great resources. And now it's just a case for the king just to keep the H pawn under control. You want to get to the H line and that's it. It's going to be a very, very comfortable draw. The H pawn incidentally is the worst pawn to have in a rook and pawn ending such as this one. Yeah, rook and pawn ending. This is just a clean draw, guys. Of course, some people in chat would be like, I'll mess this one up. I would lose this one with either side. It's like, dang, either side, even with the pawn, bro, dang. No, but that's okay, chat. It's okay, we're going to keep working on our chess but this is a clean draw, 100%. So king h4, yeah. king f4 is, is the option. Rook check, probably block. Takes, run the king to the corner, and we're done. Yeah, you literally just put the king. And remember, teamwork makes the dream work in this type of ending. This rook can hold the white king at bay, whereas this king will just simply hold away this pawn. 
and this rook. In fact, the worst one is the H pawn, the second worst one is the G pawn, and then the best ones are the F, E, and D pawns, and C ones, of course. And that is it. And um, that is it. This is going to be very clean, guys. Great. What? How many points? Where is she in the leaderboard again? Someone over in the middle. Uh, no, Elena Lagno was like third or something. And then Lagno was on three and a half points. No, Salimova was on minus one. She was on two and a half oh, points really? out of six. Okay. So maybe we're going to see Rick A7 King to G6, or maybe we'll see that. Ah, no, the players have made eye contact. And it was a draw between Katerina Lagno and Nurgul Salimova. Some excellent defense there from Salimova. So Let's go back to the bird's eye view and uh, let's take a look at the game between the body language um, from Dan here. What's going Gary on? Gary Ashkina and uh, Tan Zhong Yi. And oh, it's just draw. Okay, nothing wrong. Yeah, she's fine. There you she's can see quite right. a few pieces have uh, been traded off. Let's bring up the live board and see Rook to D5. Yes. You can see the players are move 38. Once they pass move 40, they can agree a draw. They can offer a draw. Rook d5 attacking mm. this knight. That's a good move. That is a good move. Wait a second here. You know, you always have to be looking for the weird things that they can do. Mm -hmm. And I think she has an idea. Oh, but then, no, yeah, she do have an idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, first off, we got to figure out where do we move the knight. Where are we moving? Are we even moving the knight? There's rookie six as well, but f4 mode forces us to move. Oh, but then we have knight g4 to um to e3. Yeah. Okay. But remember so the c5 going? pawn is hanging. And f5 if we move the knight. So I might take yeah. f5 first and then go try to hit c5 and just try to you know milk it up. Then I'm just gonna get the vacuum cleaner and try to swap off knights. Right. Pawns, uh, you know, uh, what's everything that? from the board. So it's just yeah. king versus king. David calls it the Hoover. We need to Hoover off all of the pawns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hoover them off. I always give them, exactly. give them crap about that. I'm like, Hoover, what is that? It's a vacuum cleaner. It's a make. It's a, it's a it's Hoover. It's vacuum, a Hoover, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it's a Hoover. Yeah, he's right. He's like, yeah, great. Yes. The Hoover. Shout out to David. Yeah. Yeah. So Rick to D5. The knight on e5 is under attack. So is the pawn on c5. Well, Zhang Yi cannot defend both of those pieces, so she has to abandon one. And the question is, which pawn does she want to let go? Does she want to let go f5? If she lets oh, go, go f5, that involves... Oh, we have move rook a2. Yep, she's going to go into a rook and pawn ending. So I'm expecting rook takes knight. And then white is also, black is also going to do the same. And either the F pawn drops or the C pawn. But with it disappears any chances for the win. So let's go back to the game. And you can see the players looking around. They're still only on move 38. They both look very, very disappointing, disappointed. But it was an exciting game for some moments. Garish can now have to find some accurate moves. A4 being very impressive. Rook takes B2. It's going to be, yeah, Tan, Tan playing out of her mind. And also uh, Alexandra is it too. Like they're, they're definitely playing great chess here. Tan has, is on a tear. She at the top yeah. of the leaderboard here. The draw is going to keep her there as well. And, and note how Either. she goes for the symmetrical pawn structure. King to G6. King here it's G6. coming, Canty. That's there it. There it is. Handshake, wow. and we are on another draw. So, wow, suddenly a flurry of results. So, it was a draw between Katerina Lagno, draw between uh, Anna Muzichuk and Hampi Canary, and it was also a draw between Gaia and Tan Zhong Yi, which means there's only one game outstanding, and there is full on fireworks in this one. Ooh, it's between Leiting Jay and Vaishali. Vaishali with 30, 30 seconds, seconds left on the clock. And you got what? Eight moves to time control? Yeah. She's on move 33. Jesus. It's going to be tough out here in the office. 
Bishop it B2 is... is coming as well. That's going to be nasty. Bishop B2, F6, Knight F6. I mean, come on. Yep. I mean, come on. This is uh, this is lights out. 12 seconds. 12 seconds. King H7. She's got to move. And G7. Okay. What has she gone for? Bishop, Bishop F5. F5. And that is not a move. Bishop B2 probably ends, though. Just instantly. And then F6. I mean, I could probably sack it. No, don't give him chances. Don't be too hasty. No, but that works, though. You can, though. You can go knight F6 check. Yeah, and queen takes, which is nasty. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so let's go through that line. Because there's a rook F8 in there that I don't like. Right? Bishop B2, F6, knight F6, GF, queen F, okay. and then rook F8. Yeah, but you can suck immediately. You can go knight F6. Oh, right now. Oh, rook, my goodness. The rook is on... <laughs> The rick is on D8 and the bishop is on F5. Oh, so you can go immediately. The engine points that you can do this. And this oh, is going to be absolutely dreadful for black. So after queen takes F6, queen to D7, you just go now bishop B2. And look at that. How are you going to defend queen to G7? That oh, is going to be bishop H6 deadly. Bishop h6, the same idea. That's yeah, insane. bishop h6 is absolutely the same. That's bishop crazy. f5, loose pieces drop off. So, of course, this is not the only way to win. I like your bishop b2. Knight to d6 is also another possibility. I like that she's using her time, though. I have three and a half minutes here. I'm not playing it like a super bliss game you would play online to just find a good move and we'll do whatever, which you can totally do that. But she's looking for the kill shot here. I'm up three minutes basically on time. I'm going to try to find it correctly and get it done right now. There's even possibilities of maybe bishop h6 check right now. Sorry, bishop h6 sacrificing, then knight f6. Bishop takes h6 is nasty, takes knight f6, king f8. Is there a mate? It's got to be, right? Okay, let's put it right. on the board whilst uh, late J is thinking. Takes, Pawn takes, takes bishop. Knight f6, king f8. Knight f6, king has mate. to run to it. Well, maybe you can just go knight h5. Knight yeah. yeah, that's Jesus. That's just crazy. You could do anything. With queen to g7 as a deadly, deadly threat. And if you go f6 to block the queen's access, when queen takes f6, right. and the rook is falling. I know I, I like your bishop takes h, h6. It's a beautiful idea. This oh, is the moment for Leiting J. Oh, and she she's going for knight f6. Knight f6. Ooh. Flex real hard. Oh, my goodness. It's about to get crazy. Now, actually, I guess it can be the same thing. King f8, bishop h6. King h8, bishop h6. So wherever you go, like bishop h6. Yeah. King f8. You have your choice. You can go bishop takes h6 and get into the line that we just saw with knight to h5, threatening queen g7. Checkmate. There's also, there's also C, C takes B6. After well, Vaishali moved. Okay. She played king to H8. King going H8. back to the, the live board. King H8. But uh, knight H5. Bishop takes H6. Both work. Knight H5, rook G8, rook E8. Oh, my goodness. You see how cool these ideas are? Then there's F6. Knight H5, rook to G8. And, and rook Kanti's eight. pointing out rook to e8. Oh, yeah, oh, that's a hot move. Yeah, it's after rook takes rook, queen G7. takes g7, checkmate. Heat. Wow. Man, there is some stuff here. It's just a puzzle rush game at this point. It's just puzzle yeah. rush, guys. Tough move to see from Vishali, though. No. It's... Yeah, tough to see. Vishali will have her day. Yeah, correct. I believe that as well. She's already, I mean, she's like, you know, they're still waiting to put GM on her name too as well. She already made it. So, you know, this is tough. Keep get your get your experience. Keep moving. Learn from it. And also, you know, there's still another seven games. Like, you know, it's a long tournament. There's another seven games after this, guys. Anything can happen. Exactly. Anything can happen. All you need to have is an inspirational rest day. Just feel really rested. Just get yourself in the right mindset. And there's also a certain freedom when you've kind of the worst has happened and your dream is disappearing that you can just, okay, forget about the result and you can just focus on the chess because anything can happen. If she gets a tremendous score in the final, in the second half, she's going to be doing well. What's she do? And we see Bishop H6. Okay, I like it. Spicy. I like it too. Knight to H5 spice. in the air. And uh, unfortunately, this rook is tied 
to the eighth row because okay that's to gotta be me eight. hold on my puzzle rushes are attending tingling what do you do well she's got knight, knight h5 right no this okay well the Vaishal, Vaishali wants to play uh, rook to d4 she's now, also bishop playing. g7 wins though bishop g7 king g7 98 double check king h6 queen g7 king g5 maybe h4 king takes queen h4 king g4 knight okay, f6 so is mate queen g7 okay and the king is going to get hunted down so king Correct. goes to g5 G maybe h4 on h4 yeah the king has king to takes. run forward queen h4 king g4 knight of six mate queen, queen here yeah oh beautiful yeah. round of applause for you Kat. Can't yeah. but let's go back to the live position because Leiting J, it's her moment. Will she find Bishop takes G7? That will force the checkmate. She has, of course, other winning moves, but Bishop takes G7. And Knight to H5, nice threatening fun. Queen takes G7. And Vishali. 42 seconds and she stops the clock she resigns and right. Leiting J she continues with her momentum this time beating Vaishali with the white pieces oh and there you can see Leiting J now moving to four points out of seven what a day of chess Kanti we've been spoiled so, so much <laughs> action <laughs> listen i'm not gonna lie i'm spoiled every day watching the commentary watching the chat and sitting here watching these games guys i always recommend go back and check all the games if you haven't already it's always a pleasure to see and be here in this day and time of chess and go look at all the games and the players try to learn something from every game especially if you play your favorite openings so good to see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely to see. And here we can see today's results. A draw between Alexandra Gareshkina against Han Zhong Yi. Also a draw between Anna Mizuchuk and Hanpi Canary. Very accurate game there. And Katerina Lagno looked like she was pressing, but in the end, some steady defense from Nurgul Salomova just held her at bay. But it was between Leiting J Vaishali, where the fireworks just exploded, and we saw Leiting J orchestrate a deadly kingside attack. What a game! Full of uh, this round had several moments to it, from the opening surprises to that attack that we just saw from Leiting J. It had everything. What was uh, mo what was notable for you, Kanti? Definitely the Leiting J. I just like her style of play. I mean, she plays aggressive. We found some wild games and then that she's played throughout the entire tournament she's also the only one to play king's india so i was a fan of that and also tan as well who played the jobaba london which is a specialty of mine so like i'm like you know i love seeing the ladies play and what they bring and of course just the candidates period but today definitely that attack was nice towards the end for late J. i think that was my highlight what about you yeah i i had many highlights i really enjoyed the game between uh humpy canary and anna Mizichuk. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very combative. I also really enjoyed the end game as well between uh, Gareshkina and Tan Zhong Yi because I thought it was just going to be an easy draw. But in the end, it wasn't that easy. It did have its moments. And of course, Leiting J. She was our victor. But again, another heartbreaking result for Vaishali. That's two losses in a row. So let's take a look at the standings. Still at the top, it is Tan Zhong Yi with five points out of seven. Alexandra Gareshkina, she is on four and a half points. And there we do see now a, a two way tie for third place between Katerina Lagno and Lei Ting J. They're on four points at the bottom of the table. You do see Humpy Canary, Anna Mizichuk, and Vaishali. Two and a half points out of seven. But there's still everything to play for because seven rounds remaining. And in round eight, we are going to see Katerina Lagno play against Alexandra Gershkina. Nurgul Salimova will take on Anna Mizichuk. Zichuk. Tan Zhong Yi faces her compatriot Lei Ting Jie and Humpy Canary plays once more Vaishali. We're now in the repeat phase where the players play each other, but this time with colors reversed. Kanti, which match are you looking forward to? Definitely looking at a Tan versus Lei Ting Jie. That one right there, because they are obviously favorites of mine, just the play styles. And of course, one play Kings Indian, which I love. One play Joe Bob, I'm like, oh, so I'm watching all their games and more. I'm definitely going to see their firework players. I think um, they can turn that 
that that gear on when they when they need to. So I'm excited to see that game. I think is hopefully be some uh, some surprises and aggressive attacks there. What about you? Yeah, I can't wait for that one. I'm also really looking forward to seeing uh, Tan Zhong Yi against uh, Lei Ting Jie because remember, <laughs> Tan Zhong Yi did beat Lei Ting Jie in round one, and now we're on for the rematch. Both players having a great first half with uh, Lei Ting Jie winning two games in a row. I, I can't wait for the battles for first place to continue because remember, in this event, the women's candidates, it is the first place and it's the only place that matters. But what a day of action today. Lei Ting Jie convincingly rounding off with a victory against Vaishali with a deadly attack. It's been full of suspense. It's been full of very intriguing end games. And remember, tomorrow it is a rest day. Kanti is been such fun commentating all the action alongside you and i can't wait to continue in the next two rounds remember tomorrow it is a rest day for everyone involved for everyone to just recuperate just rest and prepare perhaps some novelties but i can't wait for the action to begin on saturday thank you everyone for watching and see you on saturday Bye bye